everybody, I'm Kelsey and PGK, and welcome to BuzzFeed Multiplayer's The Dungeon Club. It's a live role-playing show that follows three regular teenagers who are played by adults and accidentally end up in a quest on a fantasy realm. In a, in a fantasy realm on a quest. You got it. You get it. If you're new to live role playing, it's essentially a game where our dungeon master or DM leads the players through a story where we improvise scenes and work together in real time to solve problems. None of us know where the story is going next, except of course, this DM right here. All At all times, we will let the DM know what we want to do, and he will let us know if we succeed or fail based on die rolls. Let's first go around and introduce ourselves. Hello there. My name is Mitch. I am the DM. You knew both of those things. I am uh, a musician who is big into 80s music, and then D&D slowly took, well, quickly took over my life. If you want to follow both, check me out, Twin Chameleon, on every single social platform. Yeah, how's it going? Ify Waddy Way, playing Daniel Wolf Percy of the Wolf Pack. I'm holding it down. Fun fact, he likes to dip his fries in milkshakes. <laughs> this, is, this is revolutionary to me. <laughs> You haven't caught on. He started that trend. Mm -hmm. No one was doing it. Then, then people saw him doing it. I was like, oh, maybe it is cool. Not weird. Was that fun fact inspired by the fact that you were just currently dipping your fries in a milkshake? Maybe. I am Jenny Lorenzo. I am playing as Artemia Gomez. Artemia's real name is Joss Laney. Have fun trying to spell that correctly. Another fun fact, when my grandmother speaks to me in Spanish, I respond in English, and it somehow works out. We understand each other, we're both Scorpios, so maybe that's the <laughs> cosmic <laughs> energy. And I, of course, am Kelsey and Peach K. I play the character Heather Banks. Heather Banks is the theater nerd bard. Fun fact this week about Heather. Heather first got into musical theater because her older sister Kelly did it. And so she would have been a little too shy probably to try it herself, but she fell in love because she loved to dance and she loved to sing and has been doing it ever since. She was like a little kid. Uh, and that's like the one thing she really, really enjoys doing. And she hasn't really found a passion of anything else yet. I don't know if that's a fun fact. That might just be a, a sad girl fact. Heather's, all of Heather's facts are just sad girl facts. Facts are knowledge, and knowledge is fun. There you go. Thanks, Mitch. Every episode, we invite a new guest player to join our campaign on the Dungeon Club. And today's guest is the incredible Aliza Pearl. She's an improviser, actress, writer, Trekkie producer, and RPG veteran. So thank you so much for joining us today hey, introduce yourself you and so your character much. yeah i am playing prism tempestborn a local half orc barbarian and no one has met her yet so i won't tell you too much until you meet her she's mysterious we I love like it this. Mm -hmm. i approve well thanks for coming on to the show today i really appreciate it thank you so much thanks for having me for those who are watching live on twitch right now there's some audience interaction that you might be noticing already go on uh we have a couple different things that we can do live on twitch you can vote on events that will be happening there's currently a vote going on about uh what the name of our i believe tavern is that we're going to next you can also give bits for inspiration for all of our characters that character will earn inspiration and they'll have a beautiful glowy border around them and inspiration essentially means that that person gets to have a second die roll if they roll badly the first time they can go again and then they'll use the best of the two rolls if you want to post about anything on twitter or instagram or wherever please please do and make sure to use the hashtag hashtag the dungeon club if you want to do any fan art we actually uh, will be featuring all fan art that is posted every week on the break in the middle of the stream so make sure to use that hashtag if you post any fan art and we'll be maybe featuring you with that i'm gonna toss this over to mitch who uh will start bringing us in all right well i guess let's start off with a, a real quick recap of what happened last session for all the viewers last session took place almost entirely in your high school hall winter high it started off with artemia and heather both making an absolute mess of opening night of the school musical um it resulted in some property damage it resulted in the musical getting canceled it was really embarrassing for both of them and no one was very happy with them wolf was playing in the state semifinal, Hall Winter High Otters, baby. Unfortunately, came up just short, 
and was not able to win the game. So the football season ended. Uh, no one was happy about that. And then a food fight broke out and the three of them got put in detention, uh, even though they didn't start the food fight. Um, so just a really bad start for these high school students, all kind of in their own little circles, not friends, sometimes not even friendly. While they were in detention, a weird, mysterious janitor uh, led them out of the detention room and pushed them into a janitor's closet, which suddenly sent them through a portal into another dimension, um, kind of a medieval town. So they've just landed in a medieval town and uh, everyone around the square has noticed them appear uh, and is quite terrified. So with that uh, recap out of the way, uh, we will now begin episode two, Pretty in Brown. After a brief moment of utter confusion, everyone in the town begins to panic. Women and men run away screaming. Mothers are pulling their curious children back inside while shielding their eyes. You hear shouts from the villagers. Demons! Witches! They appeared out of nowhere! In the swirling chaos, you see people emerge from their homes carrying pitchforks and charging at you. What do you do? Uh... They're coming fast! Uh, I see some <clears throat> barrels and I duck behind them because screw this. You duck behind the barrels, but they see you, so they know that you're just now ducking behind some barrels. I hold, I hold my hands up and go, I come in peace. <laughs> like this. all right, as you do that, uh, as you do that, a pitchfork flies through the air and lodges into the barrels next to you that Artemia is hiding behind. Uh, they seem like to be in a frenzy. I, 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 I try and snap people out of the frenzy by, by standing in the middle. And, I'm, and I just say, everybody just calm down right now. Uh, Wolf, what's your AC? Uh, it is uh, 12. Oh, no. right now. 12? A rock flies and it boom, hits you in the forehead, giving you... Two, two points of damage as the mob wow. approaches even faster. They're shouting, kill them, kill them, kill them, get them. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, um, I grab both of their arms and say, I think we need to get out of here and try to like run in the opposite direction and lose these people. <laughs> All right, so you start running in the opposite direction down, down the dirt road between buildings. <laughs> As you're running though, it seems that some of them might be catching ground on you. Is there anything you want to try to do to evade them? Can I like throw some barrels? At, yeah, like, you're passing like, some barrels. Over? Yeah, Perfect. So as you run, and throw some barrels behind you, and they kind of roll back and trip up some of the, the mob. They fall over, and it kind of creates a big domino effect. You keep running, and you round a corner. And as you do, uh, from an alleyway, a man pokes his head out of the alley, and he goes, Come with me if you want to live! All right. That sounds like our janitor! <laughs> <laughs> it is not. It does not look like a janitor. Okay. Um, do, you, do you follow? What do you a do weird, it though? strange co yeah. hobbit stance. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You turn down the alley, and the man is holding open a door, and he goes, "In here! In here!" And you all hop inside the door, and he slams it shut. And you just sit there in silence. And a moment later, you hear the mob angrily run by, and as the noise disappears down the street, you realize that you appear to be in a storeroom full of barrels and crates. And the man has disheveled white hair that falls down in a poof to just above his shoulders. He wears a white robe that extends to his mid-calf and big glass goggles with a leather band on his wrinkly forehead. He goes, No, I know you're not witches or demons. They wouldn't be caught dead in whatever it is you're wearing. Well, maybe what you're wearing. Are you a witch? Never mind, you obviously aren't. Who are you? Uh... Well, I like poke, I poke Wolf in the back to make him speak for us. I, I, I stand in front of, of all the, the, the whole group and go, 
I think we need to be asking you that question, sir, <laughs> and, and not who are we or where are we, but when are we? Um, and, and then I, to make sure I ask as I peek from behind Wolf, um, is this like a really dedicated LARP group or <laughs> did we time travel? I'm confused. This is my everyday life, usually. Oh. <laughs> oh my, what? I don't... I don't understand a word you just said. I'll ask you again, oh. who are you? We're just teenagers! Um, Where are... We are a traveling group. We're performers. We are thespians. I saw you appear and in the middle of the square. Special effects. It's part of our act. It's it's new. Yeah, what they say. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you don't know who I am. Well. I am Emmett Scott the Great, and I know you came through a portal. I've spent my whole life studying them, so don't you try to pull that over on me. Now I'll ask you again: Who are you? Okay, I feel like you're. Uh, you, you just tell us what you want to know because you just asked us a question, and then when we gave you an answer, you were like, "I know the real answer." So tell us what you know, and then we can go from there. I'm Heather Banks. I'm 16 years old, and I'm from uh, w w uh, Chicago, and <laughs> I'm from Hall Winter High. I'm a s sophomore. I should really be worried about me over here. I was, I, you know, y'all y'all got popularity around these parts. I was the most popular person at our high school. So any information you want to distill, distill that through the wolf. Why does the elevation of the school matter? What? No. Oh, no. It doesn't. What? It's just part of its title. All right, listen, it's very clear to me that you are not from this world. Mm. And I can help you get home. Did you come here on oh, purpose? Why didn't you say no. that in the first place? No. Aha, I knew it. We didn't come here on purpose. Well, I'll help you get back. But first things okay. first, oh. we can't back have you walking the around in those clothes. <laughs> no, the future hasn't happened yet. Oh, so right, there's right, no right. delay. Okay. Hmm. First things first, we can't have you in those clothes. He starts rummaging through the, the crates, and after a, a minute or two, he goes, Ah, yes! Put these on! And he throws you some clothes. To Wolf, he tosses a light brown tunic, some dark brown Ooh. wool trousers, and brown leather boots. To Artemia and Heather, he tosses two yellowy beige tunics that extend down to your lower calves, like a dress, and some sandals. Great, so I look like a potato sack. I don't know why I gotta <laughs> Heather puts it on is very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> she puts it on so, entirely over her like leggings and like outfit and everything, so she's got her little leggings underneath. <laughs> I just look like a really <laughs> depressing root vegetable of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So you take turns sucking back behind some barrels and changing. And then when you when you as you come out, uh Emmeth goes, Marvelous! Wait! And he reaches down, and he picks up some dirt, and he just kind of aggressively smears it on all of your faces. Yeah. Yes! They won't even recognize you. Now, to my house, follow me! All right. So he, he opens the door, kind of checks both ways, and then leads you through the town. Um, and as you walk through the town, uh, nobody seems to take any notice of you. Clearly, your clothes left a much bigger impression than your faces. Uh, you follow him out of the gates of the town and into the forest. Uh, the canopy is so thick that you can barely see anything. But after about 20 minutes of walking, you see a sunlit clearing ahead. As you step into the sunlight, you're temporarily blinded. And then as your eyes adjust, you see a large cobblestone cottage with three small towers jutting haphazardly outward from the middle of the main frame of the cottage. And then peeking up just above the treetops, in the distance, you also spot the peak 
of a far-off volcano with lava flowing down from the summit. Home sweet home! He walks up to the door and he knocks in a complex rhythm, and then the door suddenly just squeaks and opens by itself. You step inside to the sound of a crackling fire and the smell of musty leather. Books and papers are scattered all around the floors and tables, along with strange glass vessels and contraptions like you'd see in a movie about a mad scientist. Make yourselves at home. All right, I feel like I you've been stand. doing a lot of questions. <laughs> it, you know, asking us who we are, where we're from. You, you didn't say who you were. You said, do we know who you are? I did. And that you study portals. And my name, Emmeth Scott the Great, oh, alchemist yeah, and wizard. I mean, it was very. Great it was, Scott. Was, uh, uh, Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, Artemi. I guess you do be watching movies. Uh, all right. How do how you, you know? Oh, what, what he said. Both, both, both. What she said. <laughs> I don't know what either of you said. I'm hungry. I said, how do you know what happened to us? And he said, how are we going to get home? And I want to know both answers. Tell us. Okay. Well, if we're going to get you home, the first thing we need to do is figure out exactly where you came from. Luckily for you, my studies have resulted in this device here. And he reaches over and he pulls a large cloth cover off of a, and it reveals a, a beat up steel helmet. Uh, and it has little colored orbs affixed all around it. This helm allows me to look into different realms, dimensions, universes, and examine them. Now, I'm still working on it at the moment, and I can only get little blurbs, not a detailed look. But that should be enough with the right input. Let's it on. To start, does your world have a calendar? What decade was it? Well, it's it, was the 80s. it was the 80s, you know? 1980s. Okay, great. Look, time of the future. 80s or 1980s? Very different. Oh, 1980s. Yeah. Well, the 1980s. Not, not, the, not to be confused with the 1880s. or. Yeah, or the 2080s. That's who they're okay. going flying cars by then. Huh, Perfect. Right? 1980. Now, I'll need an input that only exists in your world. Perhaps a cultural touchstone. Beetlejuice? Mm. Just don't say it two more times. We don't need more chaos. Well, I, I use Beetlejuice every day in my potions. That's not going to help. All right. Well, we, we have, oh, we have one up. last. Kevin answer. Bacon? Can it be a person? Y yes, of course. Kevin Bacon? Kid. Okay. The Give me just a moment. Car. You know what a car is? Kevin, that I can't. Worked. I have it's to focus. Black. It's like a metal horse. <laughs> Do you want me to find your home or not? Y y yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. I just was really like Knight Rider. Thank you. Kevin Bacon. Heather. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't know if this sounds right. Does this, does he have loose feet? Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yes. That's the one. That's it? the right place. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Earth. 1980s Earth. Is that you? Yeah. That's yeah. Us. Yeah. Earth. Yes. Earth. Earth. E Earth. Yeah. Fantastic. Good. And oh, <laughs> one last thing. Uh, this portal you came through. What was it like? Uh, oh, it was painful. Hmm. Yeah. It was colors like, kind oh. of. Well, there were so many colors, but then also no colors. Yeah. It felt like our body was ripped apart, jiggled up, Ooh. and put back together. Oh, no. His eyes widen, yeah. and he rushes over to grab a book off the ground. He begins flipping through it frantically before stopping on a page. Oh, my. Oh, my, my, my. This is not good. For you are this world. We have no time to lose. Here, take this coin purse and head back into town. Buy some weapons, armor, provisions. Meet me back here at sunset, and I'll explain everything. Weapons. It's vital. It is vital that you return from whence you came. As soon as we can, we're sending you back to the 80s! 
I'm not gonna no, say. No, go. It. Go. <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay. It's very, really intense. Yeah. Go. Yeah. As you as weird. you step outside and begin making your way back into town, Emmeth pops his head out the door and he goes, "And don't tell a soul you aren't from this world. Got it? Not a soul." And then he slams the door back behind him. This is like a brand so, new acting exercise. I love what? it. He was talking about getting. Feels like an acting weird. exercise. We're gonna have to fight. Well, like to pretend. To, like no. Our thing. No, he's he's gonna. It seems like he's gonna have us fight for real. Have y'all ever? No. Held a sword? No. Um, no. I've I never held none. a. You know what? I was in. Uh, like all children's production of Romeo and Juliet once. So okay, I did hold well, up. This is stage. real life, Heather. This is not real life. Same. We're not doing plays. It's all right. I'm going to step up to the plate. We obviously need a leader, and that's obviously me. Captain of the football team. And I'm going to be captain of whatever this is. Fine by me. Let's go to the store and see what's going on. <laughs> Cool. You make you uh, you make the walk back through the woods and into town. Uh, you arrive. It's a rather large town. You guess it probably has a population of a few thousand people. Uh, so nobody really pays you any mind. Uh, you make your way back to the square where uh, you first appeared, and you find uh, a nearby open air market, a provision shop, a blacksmith shop, a music shop, and a tavern <sighs> called the Cuddly Duckling. <laughs> All right. Uh, how much do we have to spend on stuff? Uh, you don't know. Emmeth just threw a a coin purse at you. Okay, so ah. it's kind of up to me, because I kind of like first. I feel like Heather would really want to change into something cuter. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> get him like a pretty dress. <laughs> Because she's stressed out, so I feel like a wardrobe change would really get her into character. Okay. Um, so the, the best place for that would probably be the, the market. All right, Heather's going to go off to the market, I think. Okay. Are you guys following, going with her? Uh, should yeah. we all go to uh, separate places? We should all uh, stick together. We should stick together. Okay. okay. So you head to the open-air market. Um, as you arrive, uh, you can see it's just a, a maze of, of wooden stalls with colorful canopies. You can smell meats being cooked. Uh, you see vendors selling jewel, like wooden and glass jewelry uh, and, and clothing, just basically anything your, your heart could desire. So what are you looking for, Heather? I'm looking for uh, a pink dress <laughs> and a flower crown. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, maybe some leather armor, I guess, as well. Some Something like a leathery kind of looking armor situation. But something okay. cute as well. <laughs> some cute pink so armor. You spend some time <laughs> wandering through the stalls. Uh, and finally, you find uh, a, a stall with a woman selling some dresses. Hello, uh, I'm looking for a Hi. dress. You've come to the right yes. place? Yes, yeah, I certainly have. Do you have any recommendations for something that's not too expensive, but nice? Well, do you have a Don't color Don't waste it all. Uh, probably on the cheaper side. I don't cheaper have a specific color? number. No, pink. <laughs> Do you have pink? Okay. <laughs> she turns around and from kind of the, the bunch of, of hanging dresses, she pulls off uh, out a, a beautiful pink dress. Um, not, not a dress, but, you know, just a kind of similar to what you're wearing now, a kind of woman's tunic. But it's in pink. It's in much better Perfect. quality than the raggy one you're wearing now. Because this will be for silver. Great. For silver? I like turn over to our TV and I'm like, is that too much? Well, Who has the, uh... this coin purse? Well, has the coin purse. How much is in here? 
Let me let me, let me jangle it. <laughs> it 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 just jangles a little bit, but you you don't know how much is in there from <laughs> jangling a coin purse. Can I o- can like I open it up and see and how, what is in there? It. Yeah, yeah. Can, can I open it up and see what it's in? What's in there? Yeah. <laughs> Before we go on a full on shopping Heather- spree. <laughs> Heather just wants a shopping montage. <laughs> All right, Heather All right. yanks so, the- I count. I count what's in there. <laughs> All right, you actually you open it and you reach in, and you find your your hand goes a little bit further in than you expected based on the size of the bag, and you reach you grab you close Whoa. your fist and pull it back up, and in your hand is exactly four silver. I hand it to the woman. <laughs> All right, she hands you the dress. I, I put it on. Oh. And I was like, I'll take a flower crown too. <laughs> okay, she goes, that's two copper. Okay, I, pu- I put my hand in. You pull bag. out two copper. <laughs> Guys, I think this is thing is magic. I yeah, like whisper. No, I try that, to whisper yeah. so she won't hear us. Yeah, <laughs> seeing that, I don't even wait for Heather to tell me. I just uh, take the sack back, goes, oh, it's my turn. And I go to the right by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you trying to buy, Ify? Uh, uh, just a, 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 a sword and shield. I guess probably a short sword, right? All right, um, for that, you would want to go to the, the blacksmith shop, which is outside of the, the market, kind of back okay. toward, in the square. Well, that falls in line with what I want to do, because I need a dagger. All right. <laughs> do we have to buy weapons? Do we want to survive? thought so i I just follow them (laughs) all right so you head over you head over coin purse in hand to the uh blacksmith shop and you walk in and there is a a rather short man probably no bigger than four feet tall with a huge bushy braided beard He's got big muscles and he's got sweat on his brow and he's hammering away on an anvil and he's, as he, he sees you come in, he turns and he goes, ah, hello there, how are you? Welcome, come in, come in, come in, old boys. <coughs> hey, how's it, how's it going in here, <coughs> sir? I'd like some of your wares. Very well, what, what can I get for you? What are you looking for? An axe, a sword, an armor, perhaps? Yeah, sword and shield. Right, well, if you look right here, I have a number of things. Hmm, great. As I was saying, number of swords. What's that? Nothing. I thought maybe you might be narcoleptic, but maybe you just need some caffeine. Go on. Oh, as you noticed, so. Funny story, actually. I uh, in I used to be an adventurer in in my uh, in my youth, and a uh, a cruel sorcerer put a curse on me. So occasionally I'll fall asleep mid sentence. And that's... Um. Oh. The pipe is so when it hits the ground, it wakes me up. You see, it's just a kind of a little side effect, but nothing to worry about. A sword. Uh, here's a long sword. Long sword, I assume, not short sword. Uh, yeah, whichever. Yeah, whatever your entry level uh, sword and shields are. Very good. He grabs just a, kind of a plain sword um, and a, a silver, uh, you know, kind of a shiny metallic shield with nothing on it. Uh, he says. For the both of them, it'll run you uh, 25 gold. Okay, well, <laughs> and I stick my hand in the, in the, in the bag, in the coin purse. All right. You pull out exactly 25 gold. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> All right, here you go. <laughs> All right. Very good, very good. And he takes, the, he takes it in his hand and then just... And the coins clink all over the, all over the floor. Mm. Oh, no, oh, dear. That's, excuse me a moment. I like them to help the... him pick him up. No, thank you. Here you go. What's your You're name? Welcome. Heather. Um. What a peculiar name. Heather. I like it. Oh, good. Um, he, uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, he sells you a sword. Um, Artemia, you want to get something as well? Yep. I certainly do. So I grab the bag from 
wolf and um, I'd like a dagger I think that's I think what I should buy I uh, yeah. okay just uh, are you planning on adventuring uh yeah yeah, yeah adventures Lots well, Mike, I humbly recommend dagger. more than just a dagger. Sure. Won't get you very I mean, far. You're the expert. The, the what now? It won't get you very far. I would say get a dagger and a sword if I were you, if you're going adventuring. Sure. I can certainly afford that. All right. That will be 17 gold, please. All right. My hand reaches in. You know what happens. Yep. <laughs> hey! Very predictable at this point. It's, uh... And for so you, Heather. Heather... Yes, Heather does not want to buy any weapons, but Kelsey does want to buy weapons. So who should be correct in this moment? <laughs> Are you going adventuring with them? I am, but I don't really like hurting... The idea of, like, hurting people. Yes, but you, but you see, there are people and things that would like to hurt you, so I would recommend, at least for self-defense. Oh. Okay. In fact, um, you should what's... buy armor, too. You guys need to buy armor. I, that would be wise. I try to persuade oh, okay. Heather to buy a dang weapon. I, or like, she will see a crossbow a across the room, and I'm like, is that easy to use? Certainly! And yes. I go, okay, and I like grab the crossbow and like and then I'm like, is there anything else I need? <laughs> the bolts to shoot with the crossbow. Oh, oh, oh and I grab the bolts too. I grab like a, a large amount. And then and then I go and then I go, Wolf, can you pay for it? Uh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Artemia has the bag. Go ahead and get in the Oh, Artemia, jang can you pay up. for Ready. it? There you go. <laughs> Wait for it. Um, it is at my this pleasure. point, uh, at this point, you hear the door eh, creak open, and then goosh, goosh, heavy footfalls on the wood floor. You turn around, and there, towering over you, is a monster with light purple skin and teeth like tusks that come up out of her mouth, and she towers over you. What do you do? Ah, uh, 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 Prism! Good <coughs> to see you, Prism! Can I get you anything today? Uh, Alright, oh. good day, mate. Yeah, I just thought I was stopping by for more of those coasters. They look really good in my clearing in the woods. Do you have any more, though? I just want to know, you know, if I have some, uh, some friends over to go camping with me, I want some nice coasters to keep everything nice and tidy, you know? Keep it nice and right. Yes, middle middle coast is the one non weapon thing I make. Here you are. Yeah, perfect. Oh yeah, these are so classy. Yeah, look at that. You have come you here so much coast? those are on me. Oh, oh. You are such a good bloke, look at ya. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you know, I look I, I I come around here all the time and this village is, you know, full of okay people, but you're one of the good ones, you know that, mate? Oh, really want to give ones. Yeah. Hello, That's fellow, fellow uh, adventurers. Good to see other adventurers uh, all over here adventuring and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Are you. Is your name Wolf? Uh, yeah. <laughs> how'd, how'd you know? Uh, yeah, seriously, how'd you know? How do you know? Then you're Heather. And yeah. you're Artemia. And they ah. think I'm the witch. Well, uh, uh, well, I guess I'm uh, here to uh, to uh, make sure you don't get killed. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh, were you uh, sent uh, to uh, meet us? Yeah, your little wizard friend sent me over here. I thought I would be uh, discreet for a second um, just to see what you're really like. Oh, well. But you seem all right. Uh, <laughs> hey, well, nice to meet you, fell. Nice to meet you. You know? Uh, right, right. Good to see you out here, you know? Just, yeah. Uh, uh, you 
crunching. Well, you are you are royalty undercover, or something. No, no. What, what, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean, royalty undercover? Huh? Um, nobles running from the law, from running from an overthrown government. Mm. No. 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 Something's mm. similar. We're from out of town. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah. Keeping it uh, under wraps, are we? All right. It's all right. I'll uh, mm-hmm. I'll sniff you out. I like a good mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I slap Wolf on the back really hard. <laughs> All right, don't cough up blood now, Wolf. Huh. Oh, oh, why would I do that, Artemia? Uh, 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 you just come to have have fun. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, what else are you trying to get at this here shop? You need any other supplies or any goods or any uh, more weapons or anything? You know how to use those weapons at all. You don't look like you know how to use weapons, if you know what I mean. Oh, I've used well, weapons before. My I definitely don't know how to use weapons. My blood uses a machete. All right. Are you, are you okay, mate? Are you all yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I like to take secret breaths. Uh, you know, so I can send myself. I take secret be- breaths in the corner. Secret breaths? <sighs> yeah, secret breaths. Secret. Yeah, you, you just go in the corner. Where you from? Uh, no, no. That's it's not it's, a thing it's, here. Oh, oh, well, y'all should try it. Uh, y'all, this is something everybody should be doing is taking a secret, secret breath. Uh, but so, yeah, I know how to use the sword. I've, I've used I've, I've used the sword before. All right, then. <laughs> all right, the... Uh, uh, I, I ask if there's, like, a bag, maybe, to, like, put all my stuff in. So I have, like, the armor and then... To put the, um, is there like a thing I can strap it he to? Goes, he goes back and he, he comes back and he kind of dump. He has like a sack and he, like four potatoes fall out of it, and then he just goes, "You can have this." He hands you <laughs> a big potato sack. Can I also have sack. the potatoes? A I'm big potato starving. Sack? I pick up the potatoes no, and I, give them to Artemia. Thank you so much. All right, fine, yeah, fine. And then I bite into the potato like it's a <laughs> a juicy apple. I, I hand him more money. I I don't know how much. I just put him more, and then I strap the potato sack to my back, I guess. Okay, cool. I think we may have needed to go to another location, but I don't know, and I just put the crossbow in a potato sack and the bolts, and I have it, like, slung, and that's uh, my current setup. All right. And I bet my armor's, like, backwards or something. She does not know. (laughs) So she tied it in the front. took a bite out of a potato like it was an apple, and I just wanted to make sure we all saw that. Uh, Because I had to. Um, A girl's hungry. Yeah, but but the potato was just in the dirt. It was just in the dirt. You know, well, this is our reality now. This is our new normal. All right, well, I was... So dirt potatoes it is, my friend. Hmm. Yeah, I think you'll escape nobles or something. No, wait, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know about nobles. Afraid of a little dirt on a potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I was just mentioning it, just so, you know, so we can relish in it. I take one of the potatoes and take a bite. I slapped Wolf on the back again, really hard. Uh-huh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like a champ, like a champ. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, Prism, you know I love you, and I know you. You all seem nice, but you, this is not a social forum. You're crowding up my shop. All right, yeah, let's, all right. Let's, let's go on out of here, y'all. Good idea. Okay. Uh, all, right. all right. So you you step outside, um, and just to kind of refresh your memory, there's also 
a, a provision shop and a, a music shop and uh, the, the tavern as well. The cuddly duckling. I mean, I think it's a good idea to maybe check out this cuddly duckling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, love we ducklings. Could we could check it out. Then we might be getting, sure we might, might be able to get some more information when we go, when we go over there. We go over there. All right. right. Yeah, they have uh, really good provisions over there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I love provisions. Delicious. All right. So you head over to the Cuddly Duckling. Right next door <laughs> to it is the provision shop. Um, and so you step into a a rowdy tavern full of a you know wooden bar, wooden tables, wooden chairs. There's a roaring fire, and uh, just it is completely packed with uh, people and. And, and maybe some not people. You're not really sure. There's, there are people, shapes and sizes and skin tones that you have never seen before. Uh, and you you walk up to the bar and then from behind, a little person, probably no bigger than, than a foot or two tall. And he's wearing a little pointy kind of cloth hat. And he goes, hey there, what can I get you? Is that a gnome? Indeed Some... I am. Never seen a gnome before? What rock yeah. you been living under? Uh, I'm... <laughs> you know, like a like a garden gnome, you know? Like a, you know, not like some not a, you know, d and Excuse or... me, my clan comes from the forest, not a garden. Uh, you... Listen, oh, do you want ale or not? You are being very offensive. Well, ale? You... <laughs> Give me... <laughs> Yeah, I'm 16. Do you have... Oh? Uh-huh. Do you have water? I don't have water. I'm going to take uh, three of your frostiest ales. Three. three. <laughs> oh, Very well. So that'll be two silver. He goes. He, uh, he walks uh, over to a giant keg that's three times bigger than him. <laughs> pulls down the lever and fills up three glasses for you and slides them over. Ooh. Did you did you want something to drink, Prism? I'm sorry, I totally forgot. About yeah, I, I was gonna say I'm just standing right here, gonna protect you oh. and make sure you're not killed. Yeah, I'd like oh, a drink. Yeah. Of course, I'd like oh, a drink. Okay. Uh, you, Do you, you want mine, take... Prism? And I like I I slide this third one over to her. <laughs> Thank you. Right, kind of you. Why don't you uh, don't you don't you don't partake in the ale? You said because you're 16. I started I started with ale when I was way younger than 16. Oh, do we need to go back right. home? I just is that a thing we have to do? I I just uh, want to keep my mind what? sharp, you know. Ah, First right. time in the area. <laughs> there you go. Well, you're you a smart thinker. See it. Warriors like us, you know, we were used to this. This is nothing new. And then uh, he just takes a big, like, swig of the ale. <laughs> 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 Hope no one hears a lightweight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, after every football game, we crank a Miller. <coughs> I like... Ah! Every what game? Um, from behind from behind one of the bar patrons kind of puts a shoulder on you and goes, What's this football? Sounds oh. interesting. Oh, you... Yeah. <laughs> you don't know about football, you just get, you know get a couple of warriors out on the field, you know, and, 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 and you're all trying to get your ball to the other side by any means necessary, whether you have to tackle. You get in there and you tackle somebody, and then the, there's stoppages of play. It's actually kind of complicated and on paper uh, just as uh, uh, complicated and, and slow as, like, any kind of, like, game. Hmm. I can't say I understood what you just said. I don't recognize I your faces. That- Are you new in town? There's a scroll involved in this foot game of ball. I mean, there's usually a scroll to to, to a, a yardage scroll to see if the, the other team makes it to the first down. Because you know, every ten yards you get a new down, and you you're trying to get it to the other team's goal and it, without having a you know go through all of, you know. You know. Well, it sounds fun. I uh, hope to see it one day. 
Oh yeah, lots of fun. <clears throat> anyway, where are you? You're new in town. Where'd you come from? Uh, you know, far, much too far. You probably wouldn't even know if we brought it up. Wouldn't even know if we brought it up. All right. Was... Suit it yourself. Mm. Well, welcome to Sparrow's Where are you from? Brook. Yeah, yeah, Here, Sparrow's Brook. Oh, okay, oh, great. Were you here this morning? Uh, oh, no. Yeah, we, we just got here. here. Oh, you missed it. Demons and witches appeared in the town square just outside here. Oh. I think it might be an oh, omen. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I hate demons. An omen so for much. what? If only I, I was know. there. I'd mm. cut him. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that we missed that. It sounded very exciting. Mm. Well, mm. We almost had him, too. Oh, if I was there, you would have had him. Love to fight. And I hit my sword and shield together. <laughs> put, yeah. those are, put those away. You're in a tavern. Uh, yeah, That's yeah, entirely so, uncalled for. You know, I was just too excited. When we get to demon talk, when we get to demon talk, I get worked up. Are you, you, you have some funny strangers. I hope you, uh, you enjoy the town. And he goes back to, to his table. Uh, you actually, you, and you, you look out the window, you realize that it's, it's starting to turn to dusk. So, um, if you're going to be back by sunset, you probably need to finish up your, your shopping. Okay. Okay. Well, um, we should do we get need some any armor? You bought armor well, from the blacksmith. We bought armor from the blacksmith. Okay. You got the armor there too. So I'm sorry. You need, you need some provisions from next door. There's also a music store if you're interested in that. Oh, I would like to get some. So I, Heather wants to go to the music store. <laughs> All right, we can go to the music store. <laughs> can we go? Oh, yay. I just want to see what kind of these like instruments that they have. That'd be so cool. Maybe maybe there'll be a, a, an event where I need to put on a show. You never know when you need to put on a show. So maybe we can solve problems through song. Yeah. Mm, you're you're a bard, eh? <sighs> A, a bard? Yeah. Yeah, you're a bard, right? Sing songs. Yes. Yes. Do yes. the magic. Yep. Yeah. Magic? Yes, magic. Hmm. Right. No. Is that not what bards do where you're from? Uh. Yeah, well, I, I, I think. We, we normally do magic and this. everything involved. The place that we're from? What? Yeah, I'd like to know about it. I, I've traveled a lot. I don't recognize the way you're speaking. It's very different to me. Oh. Are you from the north? Yes. Very north. Yes. Oh, very simple there. The, the northest. Doth most the northest. change the way thou speaketh to be more understandable to ye if dost prefer it. What are you doing? I don't understand what you're I saying, mate. Uh, I don't know that I dialect. I, I speak orc and common and that's pretty much it. Ah, uh, ye, the common language of thou upon thine... Th Wait, did you just say orc? Yeah, I'm a half orc. Can't tell. <laughs> and she slaps no. you on the back again. <laughs> oh, you, you can't tell that I'm a half orc. <laughs> You're funny, mate. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, no. uh, that's uh, that's my favorite joke to tell. <laughs> mm. When I'm in the pub. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. Kelsey, do you, uh, Heather, do you want to go into the music store? Yeah, I'll go to the music store maybe while they're hanging out. <laughs> All right. You, you walk into the music store, and uh, as you enter, little, little chimes above the door. And uh, there's a, a man at the, at the end of the store behind the counter. He wears thick, black, you know, thick-rimmed glasses 
and he wears kind of this uh, slightly ostentatious, like floral tunic, and he wears a bunch of rings. And uh, as the bowing he turns, he goes, "Ah, ah, customer, customer, yes, come in, come in. How may I help you? Hello." Hi, hello. I'm Heather. Hello, What's your name? Heather. Fedge. How are you? Fedge. Nice to meet you. I heard this was the best music store in the city, so I wanted ah, to in yes. the town. Yes, indeed, it is the only music store. But yes, still, still the <laughs> finest. Believe you me. Perhaps, uh, perhaps. Hold on. I know. I know exactly what you're looking for. Uh, perhaps you are here for a recorder, or no, uh, the new, the new Kazupa Thorn. <laughs> Cutting edge. Mm, uh, yeah, I was I was looking for something that might be good for travel. Well, those, I'm those, a uh, bard, you see. Travel, in my opinion. Ah, yes, yes, I should have seen. I should have known that. Da -da. Uh, perhaps the bard classic, the lute, would interest you. Uh, I look over at the lute, and it looks very pretty. I'm assuming. <laughs> yes. It it's very nothing, pretty. Nothing, uh, nothing, you know, crazy, but it is, it seems to be a very well-built quality loot. Nothing ostentatious or anything like that, but it seems to be. Nice okay. Loot. Okay. Uh, yes. I think that that would do nicely. That's all right. Okay. Good, good. And he goes and he grabs the loot <laughs> and he, he hands it to you and he goes, oh, if I may, it looks so dazzling on you. Thank you. Thank you. How much? A 15 gold. Oh, uh, and then I, I put my hand in the bag and I pull out 15 gold and hand it over to him. Right, he takes and I gold. say, uh, I say, thank you very much. I, I can't wait to play. Well, come back and uh, come back and visit again uh, 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 soon. Soon. Uh, just remember, Fedge, Fedge Silverwither here at your service. I, I will. And then I, I head back out to meet up with uh, Wolf and Prism to see if maybe they got any supplies. All right. Did you guys maybe go to the supply shop while you were? I, I find uh, a patch of cool there. dirt and I've been uh, laying on the cool <laughs> dirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all done right, shopping? So, uh, mm -hmm. Because I've been uh, resting for battle over here. <laughs> Did you get any supplies, Wolf? I mean, what 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 more supplies will we need? <laughs> Probably uh, food. So just... <laughs> mm, good point. Good point. Let's hope our team is on it. I just. Would like to rest for battle. I'm, I'm, I got, you know, I've, I've done the ocular cartel. Artemia, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. She must have snuck off during our conversation and you just She's returned. You're so sneaky. Being frozen is weird. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right, Artemia, so you guys did you happen to. Oh, there you go. Go ahead, Mitch. You guys still have to get some provisions. Um, it seems to be the last thing, just like adventuring gear, food, stuff like that. Okay, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I, I go, I walk into the shop, look around, see all these different equipment, and, and I'm like in my head piecing together the things I need until the, I get uh, to the end, and there's like a satchel that says adventuring gear. And I was like, I guess I'll get that. <laughs> That okay. has everything, right? The lady at the counter is just, all right, I'll ring that up for you. Oh. She goes, that'll be uh, 10 gold, please. All right, let me put it in the mystery sack. 10 gold. <laughs> he takes all it. right. You buy your uh, spore pack, which you can add to your inventory. That's got pretty much everything you could need in it. Um, it would does, you like to does buy she have any, like, the rest? Healy kits? Uh, I, I do. Uh, I, I would like one of those, or two. All right, she puts down two healer's kits uh, on the Sick. counter for you. I buy those. I'm cool. like, this is so fun. I love yeah, shopping. Cool. 
Anything else you guys want before you head back? The sun is setting. Uh, I forget what even happened to me, so I'm a little lost. <laughs> you all Anyone care to shopping. bring me up to speed? Uh, we're just shopping, still. Great. Yeah, we're still shopping. Yes. Sorry, our team. Like, yeah, it's, I got a loot. I'm... Wolf got nothing, uh, but had a great bonding session with Prism, and that's pretty much it. Um, I think I will just skip this for now. I'm content with dirt potatoes in my stomach. That's all I need, me and my dirt uh, potatoes. Pa pardon, pardon me. I, I don't mean to intrude, but are you going adventuring? That seems yes. to be a common question. I, yes, we are. I'd, I'd recommend y'all buy an explorer's pack or you're going to have a hard time. Uh, two okay, explorer's pack. Oh, Prism, do you need an explorer's pack or do you have your own? Uh, do I have my own? You have your own. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Great. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I've, I've got my own. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for okay. asking. Two explorer's packs, please. All right, you pay her for the two explorers packs, and at this point, you all should be uh, good for your adventure, and probably time to hurry back to Emeth, because it is sunset. Great, amazing. <sighs> okay, so you leave the town, uh, and you return to uh, you, you walk through the forest back to Emeth's home. Uh, when you arrive, he welcomes you at the door, um, but Prism, he goes, if you don't mind, just give us. Give us a few minutes before you come in. I just have something to speak speak to them about. Just, just could you wait oh, out here sure. for just a moment? Sure, Thank I'll you. wait out here. Just look at my crystals. And she pulls out um, from her pocket. She pulls out the, a handful of crystals of different shapes and sizes and starts looking at them. Ooh, those are pretty. Okay, while well, Prism sits outside uh, with her crystals, uh, you three enter, and Emmeth sits you down at a table and serves you all some vegetable stew. Yeah. Yes. As you're eating, he sits down. He says, so, lucky for you, there's a portal capable of taking you home nearby in Mount Gravis. Only a few hours walk. Ooh, that's convenient. Yeah. Why, why would you, why, how is that convenient? That it's only a few hours walk. We can be there in no time. Well, but is you'll die. Is there something I'm missing? We'll die. Why would we die? Well, it's an active volcano teeming with dangerous monsters. Only the strongest champions can reach the portal. If you go now, you'll die horrible, gruesome deaths. Wait, what? Oh. We don't have, listen, listen, we don't have time to train you into champions. But there is a shortcut. Two shortcuts, in fact. Okay. The first is a potion I whipped up while you were gone. It won't give you champion strength, but it will increase your strength and abilities. Drink this. He hands you each a bulbous glass bottle with a clear liquid in it. I, I just Heather it drinks it. Video. All right. <laughs> yeah, Heather drinks it as yeah. very obedient. <laughs> the ocean oh, yeah. Yeah. tastes yeah. just like water. <laughs> uh, but as you drink Ooh, it, refreshing. you feel energy. You feel energy coursing through you, and you feel stronger, mm. more agile, more capable than before. And oh, uh, I feel like way, a Rocky are, movie. I don't, okay. Or your thing. Uh, by the way, you're all now level three. Just so you know. Woo! Um, level yeah. three. Level three. Good. Ameth goes, I can tell it worked. Okay, the next part is harder. Pay attention. Scattered throughout the land, there are objects that grant their possessor great abilities. They're called objects of power. No, power objects. If you each have a power object, you'll be able to survive the journey to the portal. I've spent okay. some time researching these mysterious objects and I don't know much, but I know one is located in a castle in the Spire Peak Mountains, just a day and a half's journey away. I've hand drawn you a map of sorts and he hands you a, a map. And uh, it, it's not really a map as much as a piece of parchment that he has hand scribbled in ink like a very rough path with like rough outlines on the trail you need to take. And at the end up on top of like a cliff is just a little 
It just says castle. He goes, tomorrow morning, you'll set out on your journey with Prism. I'll stay here, and I'll try to locate two more power objects for you to find. Now rest up. You have quite a journey ahead of you. And after this, he goes and invites Prism back in. Okay. Hey, have a nice chat without me. Yeah, it seems like we're going to the Spire Peak Mountains castle. Ooh, Sounds fun. I like it there. I've oh, I've fought some really great battles near there. <laughs> Spilled a lot uh, of blood. Uh, oh, I yeah. like battles too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah we all. All like right battles, then. Right? Well, I guess we'll start in the morning. Guess so. All right. All right. Get a good rest. Okay. Uh, Emmett, Goodbye. Emmett goes, uh, goes around and he kind of just pushes some papers and books off of the floor to make like a little clearing for you guys to, to lay down the bedrolls you just purchased. <laughs> yes, the bedrolls we purchased. It's in the uh, kit. It's in the adventures kit. Spoiler it's in the, kit. Yes. Um, which, by the uh, way, if I, you guys, if, if you have don't have it in your inventory, if you just add the what's it called? It's called the I always get it wrong. Explorers pack. Uh, it'll add everything. Explorers that's in pack. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Sick. Uh, I imagine I'm sleeping here too, right? Yes, you are, Prism. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you all. I'm gonna un unroll my bedroll like so that I have a good eye on the door. Okay, um, so you all you all sleep, and you get a long rest. Uh, I believe Wolf, you took some damage, so go ahead and and give yourself a long rest. <laughs> like that that rock in the forehead, probably also those pats yeah. on the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sleeping. On Sorry, mate. <laughs> all right, um, Heather, you are uh, awoken early the next morning, a little bit earlier than everyone else, because a, a shaggy white dog is just <gasps> licking your face. I wake up, because I also have a dog named Penny, and I'm like, Penny, is that you? And then I realize it's not, and that it all wasn't a dream, and that I am in this strange house in a strange world. But then I get re-excited, because it is a dog. <laughs> and so I'm like, what's your name, buddy? And I like, Scratch it. He's, Give it screechy scratches. He's got a little leather collar with a little metal pendant hanging off it that says Merlin. <gasps> Are you named Merlin? Are you a good boy? Screechy scratch. Yeah, that's um, good. That's good. You are, you are up before sunrise. Um, it, you can tell that it's probably not quite time to get up. Um, are you are you at all interested in like rolling perceptions to seeing what's around, or are you keeping your your paws off of off of stuff? I want to see what's around, but I don't think Heather would steal anything because she the guy's helping her. But I think she is curious about who this man is and like why they're he's helping okay. them. Why don't you uh, roll perception? All right. Oh, it got stuck. I believe that's a 19 oh, wow. and my uh, plus boo, 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 four, 23. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Way to Heather go. Heather is so perceptive. <laughs> so you, you start browsing the, the tabletops and the shelves, um, you know, being careful not to disturb anything um, and just quietly looking around. And a lot of it is such a mess. You can't even tell what you're looking at. It just seems to be just a crazy uh, discombobulated disaster zone. But uh, one thing in particular that catches your eye is uh, as you're walking, uh, going along the shelf, there is a, a little metal rod with like horse heads at opposite ends. And you realize that it's not actually, it looks like it's resting on the shelf, but you realize that it's actually seems to be just frozen, like suspended about an inch above the shelf. Can I touch it? Can I poke it? You can do whatever you want. Can I poke? What happens if I poke it? Okay, you you poke it and uh, not nothing happens. It's like you're poking a wall. It just doesn't even <gasps> budge. Whoa. 
I mean, I don't know what it does. <laughs> uh, he's not around, is he? No. Okay, so I can't like ask him or like ask him if I can have it or. <laughs> <laughs> well, not not at the moment. Ask permission. No. no. Okay, I I mentally take note of this horse floating object. I like maybe pass my hand under it a couple times to. See. Yeah, clear, clean under it. There's no no wires. You there's nothing. It just seems to be frozen wow. in there. <sighs> this place is so weird. Feels like I'm in a movie. And I kind of go over to like the dog and I keep petting it. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, after about thirty minutes. Uh, Emmeth comes down the stairs and uh, kind of the noise wakes wakes up everybody and then the rest of the party uh, wakes up. He goes, up, up and at him, time for your adventure. What's this? And I point at the floating object. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, an immovable rod. It's an immovable rod, immovable, Im immovable rod. It. it can't be moved? <laughs> He walks over, don't be ridiculous. And he walks over and he, uh, he kind of puts his hand around the rod and then like clicks a button on the top. And then it just, he holds holding it. He goes, here, grab it. And he just clicks it again. And then he lets it go. And the rod just stays floating. And I air. like try to grab it and I, and I pull and nothing happens. Nothing happens. Incredible. What do you use this for? Is it just kind of cool? I don't know. It's just it's whatever you can dream up, I guess. Cool. Take it, take it with you. Maybe it'll be useful. I don't know. <gasps> okay. <Maybe. laughs> Thank you. You're just giving out magic stuff. Can I get a magic like, thing too? Put it in my bag. I'll put it in my potato sack with my like weapon. <laughs> Perfect. Wolf, he, uh, he goes, well, I whipped something up for you last night. And he, he comes over and he, he, he's got just a little crate box. He opens it up and it's got, uh, it's got three little vials of this deep red viscous liquid. And he picks it up and kind of swirls it and it glitters gold. <gasps> he says, here, take these potions of healing in case you need them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Can I also have magical goodies? That's for, I, that's for all of very you. Much that's, like, okay, you're getting greedy. It's time to go. You have to, it's hey. an important adventure. Whatever, I took your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well. Uh, well, thank yeah, you for your hospitality, and I guess we'll never see you again? What? No, find the power object and come back. So oh, I can tell okay. you where the other well, two are. I got a, oh, I'm researching that, that while I'm gone. It's like you didn't even listen to me. Sorry, it's just been a little overwhelming of a day. So sometimes I need a, a bit more, a bit of a repeat. But I got you this time. It's, it's Thank you so much, Mr. Prism, Mr. Scott. Prism, take care of him. Pri oh, all right. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I take a long time to wake up in the morning. We got to go where first? We're gonna go to the mount, the Side Peak Mountains Castle. All oh, right, right, right. To find the power object. Power yes. object. Yeah. All yes. right. Object of more power. Let's go. Prism uh, has her breastplate on, and she just clanks it. All right, let's go. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> gonna go you, all, uh, ah! you all uh, oh. don your armor. You suit up. You equip your weapons. All that stuff. Uh, and you you set out, um, and uh, we'll let's go ahead and take our our quick break here, and we'll resume with your uh, we'll start your journey when we come back. For two minutes, we'll have a live Q and A. So ask Artemia anything. A M A <laughs> or A A A. Hey, how's everybody doing? My favorite color is black, and on occasion, I like to mix it up a bit, and it's eggshell black. What is your favorite? little lecha animal it's an inside joke i really actually like camels and sloths 
Those are my favorite little animals. Camels aren't actually little, but to me they're all little and cute. Would Artemia ever poison anyone? I mean, I really look up to the evil queen from Snow White, but that has really nothing to do with the poisoning aspect. I just think she's pretty badass. I look evil, I'm not actually evil. How do you feel about this adventure you're on? It's okay. Um, as long as there's more vegetable broth and dirty potatoes, I should be good to go. It has a lot of carbs, and it fuels me. I've always wanted to stab someone. Again, I'm not evil, only people who deserve to be stabbed. How do you feel about Depeche Mode? I like them. I just hope they don't go too mainstream, and if they do, then I'll just lose interest. What do you actually think of Heather and Wolf? They're alright. I'm starting to get used to them now. I was at first dreading to be stuck in a weird universe with Heather specifically. I, I can tolerate her. It's okay. It's like an onion. You have to peel back all the layers. Oh, we back. Oh, we back. We're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, are we back? Oh, we're back. Oh, we back. Oh, we back. Oh, we back. Oh, we back. It's like a weird ASMR y type song. ASMR DD would be wild. Oh, my God. That has to exist, right? Clank, clank, yeah. Clank, 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 clank. <laughs> Sorry, like, take some spoons. <laughs> yeah. Enough of that. Let's play D and D. We. You okay. set off from Emma's cottage into the thick woods, following his poorly, hastily drawn map with almost no details on it, except kind of giving you an idea of which roads and paths to follow and where to turn to make it. So. You, you creep, or you don't creep, you just walk. <laughs> but you walk through this dense forest on a narrow path. Can I get your walking orders, please? Hmm. Well, obviously, uh, Wolf's going to try and be at the front, trying to, trying to hedge the top with Prism. So, yeah, you know <laughs> Yeah. And Prism is actually in front. <laughs> <laughs> kind of notices... Kind of notices Wolf like trying to edge her out, and is like, "Oh, oh, oh, you want to walk together?" And she like links arms with him, oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, still in front. <laughs> but still in front. <laughs> Heather's probably behind them. She's probably in the middle, I would think. Just following. Okay, and Artemia in the back. I'm in the back, and because I didn't get transported with my camera, I am taking pictures of the sights with my mind. <laughs> Love it. Um, in other words, admiring nature. <laughs> sure. So you walk, you walk for hours through this forest. Uh, it, your your feet are sore. Your arches are aching. You know you can tell that after this journey is over, your whole body is just going to be tired and sore from this journey. And uh, as a, it's very dark because the canopy is so thick, but as evening is approaching and you're preparing to make camp uh, for the first night, you come to uh, an area uh, where the path narrows uh, and, and there's like a little escarpment um, to the side. And then uh, Artemia, you're looking around, taking photos of your mind, uh, Prism and, and Wolf, uh, I imagine you might be in the front, uh, still jockeying for who actually walks, walks in the lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a, uh, you continue throughout the every so often, you guys just kind of try to just walk a little faster to to pass the other. 
And uh, as Wolf, as you're going to, to overtake Prism for the twelfth time today, uh, you you your feet, both of you, crunch on some leaves, and then suddenly, whoom! A big net from a tree above yanks you up, and you're now both suspended in the net. And from there, five little goblins pop out. <laughs> And they two on an escarpment with arrows up by a giant boulder, and three hop out of the bushes on ground level with Heather and Artemia. Roll initiative. What? Okay. Ten. Amber, Heather, Artemia. Four. Four. Wolf. Yeah, dang it. Floor dice. No. <laughs> what about you, Prism? Uh, I got a nat twenty on that plus my, uh, modifier, so twenty one. <laughs> All right. Nice. Right. Oh. I, I rolled a five. <laughs> First roll of the game. Five. All right. Plus your modifier, plus your initiative, Wolf. Yeah, yeah. That's that's plus the initiative. So I rolled a three. Oh wait, what's where's the initiative? Oh, I didn't add that. Thirteen's mine. Okay, great. So um, I know we have a lot of new viewers. So just to explain, initiative is the order that we take turns. d d is turn-based combat. Um, so first in the order, we have Prism Tempestborn, who is currently hanging up in a, in a net trap with Wolf. Prism, what do you want to do? Uh, you, you can tell that there are, there are goblins all around now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to, I have, do I, I just have like axes and stuff. I don't think I have like a small dagger type thing, do I? Uh, but I'd like to try to cut us out of this net somehow. Can I try to do that with an ax? Yeah, make a, a <laughs> dex check, dexterity check. Okay. Um, do I get, I think I get advantage on dex for, oh no, never mind. It's against fe- effects. Okay. So dexterity is one. <laughs> I got a four. Uh, five total. Five. You you kind of can't quite get your axe uh, out at the moment. You're struggling. The net has got you all tied up. Next, we're going to go to the goblins. The three goblins on the ground uh, run up to Heather and Artemia and attack. Heather. <laughs> the first one runs up with a little with a little rusted, uh, corroded short sword. And, oh yeah, that's Ew. a 20 something. That's gonna, that's gonna hit you. Oh Sorry. no! <laughs> and uh, you know, you, you wanted to be a pacifist, but uh, he comes up and he just kind of slashes your, your arm with his short sword and does oh, ah. five damage <gasps> and draws blood. Oh my, oh my gosh! <laughs> Poor little Heather! <laughs> Artemia, the other two run up to you from the behind. Uh, and, oh man, they're rolling really good right now. Oh, this is not. Damn mm. it. Okay, they, they both hit you. Great. For uh, well, both of them, this. both of them run up to you and uh, one kind of bashes you with the butt of their sword and the other kind of cuts you on the, on the calf for six damage total. <laughs> I'm fine. Tis but a scratch. From uh, from the escarpment above, where there are uh, two goblins, you can see they're both got their backs against a big boulder, and they're they're trying to to roll it over so it rolls down onto the path, and Indiana Jones style crushes you. Um, we go to Heather. What do you do? Uh. Heather, I guess, like, fumbles out her... I feel like she'd want to try to talk it out, but they already... She's bleeding, so I think she's going to fumble out her uh, crossbow and put, like, the things in and try to, like, go for someone's knee just to, like, get them <laughs> down. <laughs> okay. Um, which which goblin would you like to to shoot the at? There's obviously the one... The, yeah, the okay. one that hit her. Okay. Uh, go ahead and okay. roll the hit. All right. 
Okay. So that's just a, a plain roll, right? I don't need to add anything roll, to uh, it. You do. So you roll your d20, and then you look at your crossbow stat, and there's a little plus icon that will tell you what to add to your roll. If you have your crossbow stat? equipped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll pull up your sheet right here. Okay, my crossbow. I don't see anything. Plus, plus four. Um, it's in plus your action tab. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I have 22. All right, that hits. So go ahead and roll a uh, D8 plus two for your damage. All right, that's four. Four Get damage. Get your back, son! <laughs> The uh, they got you panic and you kind of pull up your crossbow and just fire and it flies right into the side of the knee of the goblin. And he goes ah, ah, and he kind of collapses down to, to one knee. He looks like he's in really rough shape. Are you uh, okay? And then, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Daniel, uh, or Wolf, as you typically go by, uh, what are you doing? You're still trapped in this net. I I, I looking at uh, Prism. You know, kind of shuffle with their their big axe. I'm like, oh, well, uh, look like it's up to me to use my hand axe. And I go for the hand axe and start trying to All right. kind of wait. make a dex check. Uh, that's going to be seven. <laughs> seven? You I'll guys. Look you, Mike. You're both still just struggling to pull your axes out <laughs> from their holsters. Let me just show you how it was done. Can you just, can you just turn over that way? It just, I, I could maybe yeah. reach my... Yeah, uh. here it is. Artemia, it's your turn. You have you currently have two goblins on you uh, at, at the moment who are actively attacking you. How annoying. Okay, well... I want to take them both out or try to. Is that possible to take them both out with one dagger? Uh, or is that ambitious? Uh, typically, you can only attack one enemy per per turn. Um, also, did you that get something other than a dagger? Because a dagger is a dagger tends to be pretty weak. So if you have a sword, you might want to go with that. So what is the name of the sword? Because I didn't add it because I wasn't sure, sure I, which sword I was given. Um, probably a long sword. Um, I'll go ahead and add that for you. Um, go ahead and roll a d20 for me while I'm doing that. Okay. Second. Okay. What'd you roll? <laughs> a five. A five plus two for a seven, uh, which does not hit. Yeah, unfortunately. So you, you pull out your sword, but you've never used a sword before. It's kind of clunky and, and way heavier than you thought. So you actually kind of, it, it pulls on your wrist and it kind of dips. You don't manage to get an attack off. Uh, uh, we go back to the top of the order with Prism. All right. I am getting annoyed that I'm supposed to protect these people and some goblins got me trapped in a net. So I'm going to rage. So that I, and I'm uh, in my rage, I'm gonna just try to like rip apart this net. Okay, go ahead and uh, give me a strength check with advantage. Well, um, okay, 13 plus three, so 16. All right, so you, you start to get worked up and you let out a scream and just flex your, your arms and the, the net just <laughs> rips completely and you and uh, you and Wolf both fall to the ground uh, with a thud and take two damage as you just clunk onto the ground. Uh, can I use a bonus action to attack one of the goblins? Uh, yeah, because you're raging, so yes. Yes! All right, um, so there will, are there uh, are three on the ground around the girls and then there are two up on the cliff still pushing this boulder to try to flatten you guys. All right, I'm gonna go for one of the ones uh, that's surrounding the girls. Okay. Um, do you want to go for the one who's already been hit, or one of the unhurt ones? Um, I'll go for whichever one is closest to me. So. Okay. Go for it. Um, roll All the right. hit. 
Do I get advantage on this too because I'm raging? Um, I'm slightly foggy on the rage. I think. I think you do. Um, I know. I think you also get plus two to damage when you rage. Oh yeah. Well, I need it because the highest I rolled was nine. <laughs> so if that's plus five total, then fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, oh, you said sorry. Plus two to the damage. Yeah. So no. Uh, plus no, three, plus two 12. to the hit. Or yeah, to the damage. So you got a twelve. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then fourteen. So, okay. no. so you, so you run up. Total. You run up to the. Uh, you run up to the goblin, um, and kind of in your blind rage, just start swinging. But uh, you actually swing over his head, completely. He's a little short guy, um, and you got to recalculate for for next time. The the goblin turns around to you, and uh, swings at you with his sword. Uh, what's your AC? Fifteen. Fifteen. So he hits as he as you swing over his head. He just takes his little short sword and just jabs it right up into you for six damage. As he finds a gap in your armor, just kind of digs it right into the side of your body. Um, you have resistance though, remember? So it's only half damage. Oh. You get three damage there because you're right. raging. All right. So- Um, the next goblin, the the next goblin on you, Heather, misses as he tries to swing at this sword. You actually just put your crossbow out, and he just clunks on the metal of your <laughs> your crossbow, and you let out. He's ah! <laughs> through. And the next goblin on you, Artemia, uh, is distracted by uh, uh, Prism jumping down and actually kind of just panics for a second and hops into one of the bushes. Ah. Up top, those two goblins uh, are still pushing the boulder and they get it just over the edge and it begins to roll down. I need everyone to make a dex check. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Okay. Uh, 15. Okay. I got 22. 23. 10. She nimble. All right, you're actually all, as this boulder comes rolling down the escarpment, down the path, you all dive into the brush on each side and you get kind of scratched up a little bit, but just nothing deep, nothing that's gonna gonna leave more than just a scratch. Uh, And the boulder rolls by, but unfortunately, uh, some of the other goblins weren't quite paying attention and do get hit by the boulder. Um, the The one that you already hit, Kelsey, uh, is completely flattened like a pancake. <laughs> and the it other brings me uh, joy. I'm like the other, gets, <laughs> the other gets its foot rolled over, so it's, its foot's flat, like broken, and he's kind of hobbling. He can't really walk anymore. And we go to uh, Heather. It's your turn. <laughs> Heather's pretty traumatized. Um, are there anyone that looking like they'll go for her next? Like, are they um, still going to attack, or are they going to run away? Uh, the two up on the escarpment uh, see, are fine. They haven't been touched. Um, the rest of them okay. are looking a little bit little uh, worse for wear and a little skittish. Okay. Flat. So Heather's, like, real freaked out, and she starts, like, plugging her ears and singing to herself. And <laughs> she starts singing, um, what, of course, the dissonant melody of... of uh, into the woods and <laughs> accidentally cast dissonant whispers on the person in front of her. Um. On the guy in front of her. <laughs> Which, of course, okay. whispering this melody, you know, oh, he's going to be racked with pain, I think, is what it says under the yeah, spell. Let me, let's see if he makes the save. Definitely okay. doesn't make the save. Gonna take three d6 psychic damage. <laughs> so can, roll roll three d6, Kelsey. Okay. Okay, so that's three. Do I have to roll mm-hmm. it three times? Okay, yeah, d6 three. three times. Three. Okay, six. And two. Or so eight. <laughs> so the. Uh, <laughs> The goblin suddenly, uh, he's hopping on his, his with holding his broken foot, and then suddenly you start to sing, and he goes, ah! Ah! 
and he passes out and just falls over on the ground, immobile. <laughs> Heather I mean, is no, name. I hate extra that extra traumatized. <laughs> it's like what? Yo, Heather just killed something. <laughs> Wolf, Heather just um, killed. Heather walks away and vomits into the bushes. <laughs> Uh, Wolf, you're up. Uh, there's only one goblin left on the uh, on the ground, uh, and then there's two up on the ledge still, who have uh, bows and arrows. All right, the the one uh, how close? Which one is closest to me? The one on the ground? Uh, yeah, the one on the ground is definitely closest. Okay. Um, I, I I walk up to the one on the ground, and I'm like, all right. It's time to do it. And I close my eyes and just swing my blade at uh, <laughs> Roll the hit. Okay. Um, uh, 22. Oh, that hits. Roll damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, nine damage. Nine damage. All right, so you you close your eyes and you blindly swing your blade and you hear it connect and you feel it connect through your arm and you open your eyes and you see that there is a a goblin body and then next to it is a goblin head. (laughs) (laughs) I did it. Artemia, you're up. There's only two left up on the ridge. Heather vomits again. (laughs) Oh, oh god! <laughs> Musicals and vomit and goblin parts. Ugh, what a party! Well, I've been watching a lot of Chuck Norris. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, yes. Wolf. I like it. I, I, Good. I I'm glad you. I'm, I appreciate. Is it possible to kick one in the face? So they're up on a, on the ledge right now. You've you've actually dispatched True. the three on the ground. Um, so you would Are have to kind of scramble up this escarpment. Okay, so they're trying to shoot at us with with um, arrows, correct? Yes. That's why they're up there. So I'm gonna try to reach. I'm gonna try to approach them, climb up okay. to where they are. Ooh, sneaky Can you make time. an athletics? Can you make an athletics roll for me? Fourteen. Fourteen. All right, you you scramble up the escarpment and you're now up with them. What do you want to do? I want to kick one in the face. All right. Go ahead and roll uh, for a uh, melee attack. The I think it's the unarmed strike is the one that you want to use. So roll d twenty, and then add one to your roll. Oh, okay, there's something wrong with the... Okay, so 15. 15? All right, that, that hits. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. Um, oh, never mind. Okay, you actually don't roll damage on that one. Um, cool, so you actually... You, you, you pop up and you kick one of these goblins and you actually just send him flying off of the escarpment and he just rolls down the hill and just... Goosh! That's why he kind of hits a rock and he, he doesn't move after that. Would you um, call this the touchdown, Wolf? Oh! <laughs> Prism, you're up. There's one left. All right. Uh, the one up on the on the rock, yes. right? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'd like to take my javelin and try to throw it up there at him. Go for it. Will I roll? Um, what should I roll on this? Always a d20 to see if you hit, and then you just add your plus um, next to your javelin where it tells you the hit slash DC. Um, oh, add that number. Got it. Okay. I think it's plus five. Yep. Cool. 18. 18. All right. Go ahead Wait, and roll no. Damage. No, 24. Sorry. I got a, a oh, right. tw- 19 plus five, so 24. Great. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, and damage. All right. Damage is all right. Oh, no. That's seven total. 
Seven damage. All right, so you you run up. Uh, the the goblin starts to turn to flee, and as he does, just javelin catches him right in the the back of the calf, and he kind of trips down and then hops up and continues to to scramble away, and he runs away into the into the brush. Dang and we're now out of initiative. You've you've won the fight, uh, and you are now surrounded with the bodies uh, and some dismembered bodies of uh, goblins who you have slain with your own hands. If you vomit one more time. Heather's like trying to keep it together, but there's like tears in her eyes. And she's like, did we, we just killed things. We just killed things. They sucked. That doesn't mean you're allowed to kill them. Plenty of people suck and I don't kill them. Uh, plenty of people don't try to kill us, Heather. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Defense. If Chuck Norris taught me anything, it's that. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It was self-defense, self-defense. Be like Chuck Norris. Be like Chuck Norris. Be like Chuck Norris. Uh, you're both uh, red. I've been, I've, um, I've climbed back down. I went up to grab my javelin, mm -hmm. and so I've climbed back down, and I keep hearing Chuck Norris so, uh, is this Chuck Norris a, uh, like a warrior from your, from your town? I would say so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. A northern warrior, Chuck Norris. Hmm. I haven't heard any tales of him. Do you have a song about him, Bard? Uh, no. What? Is there a song from that show? <laughs> No, no, I don't know the song about him <laughs> myself, unfortunately. <laughs> but he's known for his kicks. He just mm -hmm. kicks his people. Round house, his roundhouse kicks. I don't know how he does it without popping his leg out of his hip socket. It's quite impressive. Wow. Wow. Sounds, sounds mighty indeed. Very much so. Well, shall we get going then? And I kind of yeah, kick a yeah. goblin carcass out of the way. <laughs> well, I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. let's just head on. It's actually, uh, it's actually coming up to, 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 to nighttime. So you figure you should actually probably find a spot to make camp. Sound good? Good idea. Sounds very good. Yes. Right, you, uh, uh, do you, does anyone know how to make camp? Mm-mm. I, I was in Girl Cuban Scouts parents. once. <laughs> Heather was in Girl Scouts, but she didn't do the camping badge. So she knows in theory, kind of, but not actually that much. So you were a Girl Scout, but you don't know how to set up a tent. Precisely. You guys don't have tents anyway. Okay. You just have bed rolls. We have bed oh. rolls. That is right. Wishful thinking. Yeah, I guess we'll just sleep with our bodies exposed in the wilderness in these bedrooms. And the mosquitoes. Oh, you also realize wonderful. it's getting uh it's getting quite cold. Yeah. As uh, as the night falls. <laughs> Even better. Do, Does do anyone... we have to make a fire? Yo, yeah, that why don't one of you uh, make a fire? I'm gonna go uh, just look around this area, make sure it's safe for us to camp. Uh, hopefully, you'll have it all set up when I get back. All right? All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll go, yeah, totally. I, I get like a whole bunch of like dry wood and just put it in in a uh, in a pile and do that. All right, and roll for roll all. survival, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> About how you do I've it. I've seen it on TV. I've seen it on TV. <laughs> Let's see. All right, here it is. I rolled a seven. A seven. So after about after about fifteen minutes, uh, Prism comes back to you over just a stick of twigs, just rolling it, uh, and it's not even smoking. Nothing is even. <laughs> happening <laughs> heather's like holding a tinder box but like doesn't want to say anything so she just sits there holding a tinder box from her pack watching him 
<laughs> because she doesn't want to tell him. <laughs> uh, Hi, what's going on here? Welcome back. Why? We've uh, done gotten so much done since you last left. Doesn't look you like you have. have. All right. Well. <laughs> It may not seem like it, Prism. Um, we had many good conversations. That's something. All right. Mm -hmm. Sure, you're sure. Not, you're now you're all not... starting to shiver in the cold. All right. Uh, let, me, let me take over. Let me try with that fire. I'd like Please to try do. to help out with the fire. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, is there Wolf. a tinderbox? Wolf, do you, like, yeah, you all have, tinder, you all have box. tinderbox. We all have yeah, them. Yeah, I, I have a tinderbox, <laughs> so I'm just waiting for someone to pull it out because I didn't know what it was. What is wrong with us? <laughs> Heather's too uh, doesn't like to make decisions, so she's like, yeah, "This will work. I don't need to say anything." Okay, I just I just look around at these and I realize just how very strange these people are, and so I just walk over to Kelsey and I take her tinderbox and I'm like. You all right? Are you are you all right? Yeah, it's been a it's been a weird day, so I think I just need to get some rest. You're not used to battle, are you? Seeing all that carnage. No. In yeah, Frogger. I understand. Okay, you uh. In Frogger. You all you finally get the it, fire going, and you uh you turn into bed. It's uh, maybe not the easiest rest. Uh, you've had definitely not Heather's easiest uh, night, but you you get as much sleep as you can. You take a long rest, so you heal completely. You get all your spell slots back, stuff like that. So go ahead and mark a long rest on your sheet. Just at the top, you just click long rest. Got it. And then you wake up the next morning, and you set off on your journey. After about an hour of walking, you come the the forest ends, and you are at the base of a series of, of tall mountains. And you look at the map and uh, you can see that, that he drew a little forest and then right at the end of the forest there are mountains. So you continue up the path and you spend the next uh, m majority of the day just trekking through mountains, scrambling up boulders and uh, walking through switchbacks. Just path, just zigzagging back and forth up the mountain. And as you get higher, you can see more and more of the landscape. It seems to be mostly this dense forest you walked through uh, about as far as you can see. Um, and then in the uh, kind of early afternoon, uh, the switchback finally stops. And uh, completely out of breath, you reach a large flat plateau and you reference the map, and it says it shows this is where the castle is. You look up across this vast plateau. There is no castle. Mm. Whoops. Mm. Uh, 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 hmm. uh, um, do we have the right map? Hmm. Maybe we got lost? Yeah, this is... Maybe the castle's invisible. Mm, Maybe it moved? Maybe it's a small castle. Maybe it's not that big. And it's just tucked hmm. away. All interesting we possibilities. Just, maybe we should inspect it and see what's going on. All right, would you like to yep, roll uh, investigation? Sure. Heather wants okay. to get down to the bottom of this. <laughs> Oh, that was bad, but I have inspiration! Woo! I'm using it. Thank you, audience, for giving me inspiration. Sick. All right. The first one was four, but the second one was 14. And then let me add my... Uh, what, am, what am I rolling again? In Investigation. Investigation. I will be adding my investigation, which is... Hmm... Here it is, four, so 18. Sorry, that was long. Right. 18. You, you start walking the plateau, just kind of deeper into this 
uh, is a deep run. After about five minutes of walking, uh, you realize kind of tucked up uh, against one of the kind of walls of the mountain uh, is a semicircle of six ruined pillars. Um, all, all that's left of whatever used to stand here is, is six pillars with rubble scattered all around the ground. Did something well, uh, happen here? I, I imagine so. Seems like that map is a bit outdated. Hmm. Does the map say that the power object is inside the castle or near it or under it? The map just says where the castle is. It doesn't say anything about the location of the object mm -hmm. itself. I think he said mm. it was in it. Yeah. In the castle. All right, then I guess uh, I'm going to just walk up to the front and uh, see if the castle appears. Because maybe, you know, I don't know. Uh, you walk up and nothing appears just seems like six pillars in a semicircle mm. hmm. can i get closer to the pillars and see if there's writing on any of them yeah go ahead and roll investigation i have a Nine. Nine. Um, you, you walk up to one of the pillars and uh, on the, the back side of the outside of the semicircle, you look up and you kind of dust it off and you actually see that it has uh, a word written on it. it. Just says the. Okay. And that's just on the one pillar. Mm-hmm. I would want to check the rest of the pillars to see if each pillar finishes the sentence. Ah, you, you go around and do that. You, in order from left to right in the semicircle, you see that it says the common thread ties you together. Common the thread. common thread hmm. ties you together. Huh. Well, I don't know, what, what do we have in common? We go to the same school. Yeah. Uh, I don't go to the same it. school, but maybe I'm not included here. Uh, mm. You're right. Mm. Uh, I mean, we all... Uh, we all have arms and legs and heads? Yeah, yeah, we all have our arms, legs, and heads. We just killed a bunch of goblins? Yeah, we all just killed a bunch of goblins. We all like Chuck Norris. All of us, equally. Mm-hmm. Not so good at thinking about things. I'm better at, like, hitting and smashing. No. All the video games I've played, and this is not coming in handy. My mom was right. <laughs> Thread. Hmm. Common thread. I mean, it's not like a literal piece of thread. Do we have to stand in the middle hmm. and hold hands? Is this some weird, maybe a chant? Maybe we chant it together? Meh. I guess it doesn't hurt to try? Sure. Uh, I need to refresh my memory. What is the full sentence again? The, the common, common thread, thread ties you together. Ties you together. The common thread ties you together. The common thread, thread ties you, ties together. you together. together. Um, as you the, as as you do this, um, you all kind of did you say you kind of like gather around we, the semicircle? We gather. Yeah, we hold hands. Okay. Um, uh, Prism, on on your way walking toward the center of the circle, you um, as you walk, you you step and you feel your foot kind of lower a little bit. And there's a pile of rubble in the middle, and it kind of just, like a, a pebble, just kind of falls off the pile. And you look down, and, and you, you stepped on, like, a, a plate that 
lowered when you put your weight on it. Ah. Uh, I, uh, I want to just make sure, put my full weight on it. Does anything else happen if I lean into that? Um, as you put your full weight on it, you can see some of the rocks start to just move ever so slightly, but uh, that's all that happens. Ah. Prism, what's happening? Ah, oh, I think uh, we might need to step certain places and, and the, the castle will rise or something. Uh, do you see oh. any anything that looks like what I'm stepping on? I look around for something that looks like what she's stepping on. Yeah, and you actually realize that um, around the semicircle there are multiple pressure plates. Per pillar. Uh, actually, but between there are four pressure plates around. Four. The semicircle. I, okay, I, I step okay. on the nearest pressure plate to me. All right, the rocks I start poop. to move even more. I do the All same right. thing. You each step on a pressure plate. You're at different spots within the circle. And as you all push the plates down, the pile of rubble in the middle whoosh, floats up into the air. And you can see it spell out a word. But each one of you, from your perspective, sees it spell something different. So, Artemia, you see the word rest. Wolf, you see the word flag. Heather, you see the word staff. And Prism, you see the word bar. I see a word. Do you guys see this word? Y yeah. 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 It's the bar. Mine says what is, what? flag. Wait, we're Wait, seeing what? different words? Mine says Mine staff. Says rest. Staff? Is this a sentence? Rest. Staff, bar. bar, flag, 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 rest, rest, rest at staff. bar flags, bar flag, bar staff, flag rest. staff, bar, flag staff, where the rest bar staff, at flag rest? staff, bar, rest at flastag bar, rest at flast. <laughs> That's a tongue twister, oh, isn't it? You're, you I sound know. like you're in The Wizard of Oz. I love my yellow prickles. Oh my! I love my yellow Rest at Flagstaff. Rest bar? Rest bar. Right, yeah. Rest flagstaff. What? Flagstaff okay. rest bar? Yes. Rest at Flagstaff flag. bar? Rest flagstaff and bar are the four words that, that you saw. Well, clearly just saying what? them all doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably After not, but... I mean, what yeah. if there what is a flagstaff bar? Prism, do yeah. you know yeah. of a flagstaff bar? Would Prism know of anything in this area called flagstaff bar or similar? No, there's no place called flagstaff. Huh. No, I don't... I don't, I don't think so. Never heard of it. Oh, we rested. Wait! Oh, the thing! The common thread! Wait! Wait! My little half-orc brain is working! <laughs> we rested together, and that's what we have in common. But we also went to the bar together. The, okay. the common thread... The, that, the common thread ties you together. Are you all still standing on the plates, by the way, or have you stepped off? Yeah, I'm still on my plate. Here. Okay. I'm still on mine. Does anyone have any exciting weapons on them that they may have acquired? Heather, didn't you? Suddenly the rocks in the middle floating just fall. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Um, I step off the plate. Okay. And nothing happens? Yeah, I step off the plate too. You know, they kind of, as you step off the plate, they resettle just a little bit, but nothing in particular mm. happens. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's a letter? Does this... The common thread... Common thread... Okay, well, bar Isaac. ends in an R, and then rest starts with an R, and then that might be the N, so... Oh, no, never mind. 
flag. No, you're It'll right. Boris staff flag. They all begin and end as each other. Boris staff flag. Oh. Hmm. Yes. Kind of. I'm gonna just step on the the plates again, see if something happens. I'm gonna look around okay. to see if there's anything else. As you, as you step back okay. on the plates again, the rocks begin to to float a little bit. I don't think everyone's on the plates though, right? So I'll, I'll get again, back on my plate too. All right, you hop back on the plate, and once again the rocks float up into the air. But this time you each see a different word. You see oh. stone, dollar, castle, bar. Stone, dollar, castle, bar. I don't see bar. a common letter that they all have. We got bar mm. again. I'd love to investigate the area to see if there's anywhere to input these okay. words. Okay, you uh, go ahead and roll investigation. Nine. Nine. Okay, you step off the plate and the rocks fall. You spend some time looking around and you find nothing at all. It seems that everything you've to be found is is right in this little area and you've already found it. Mm. Do you step? Maybe back we on should the step plate on or? the plates again and see if it says another thing different. Yeah. Oh wait. Step on the yeah. Maybe. Again. And maybe if we do it one at a time, it'll do it like one word at a time. Yeah. You know. So you step onto we'll the plate one. If, if, if you step on the plate one at a time, the rocks don't float. They just kind of jitter. Uh, so, so we, we all step on standing again. together. You all step on, and you see dew, river, ice, and mist. Dew, river, okay. ice, water, mist. That one. That one all like yeah has water in common. Should we just say water? Hmm. Water. So anyway, I have water. I like. I pull out my. Little water thing, and I'm like, do I do something with the water? Uh, splash around. Little, yeah, yeah, splash it. Let's let's, okay, let's see what I, happens. Yeah, I take my uh, water skin and I just dump it on the on the middle of the thing. Nothing happens when you do that. <laughs> That's. I had a feeling. <laughs> Ice mist. I step on the plate again. <laughs> we uh, keep getting new words. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this I time it, it's it's back to the first ones again. Rest, flag, staff, and bar. Okay. Rest, flag, staff, bar. All right. Cool. So, bar is repeated twice. Mm hmm. But no other words are. And I, I, I tell everyone to Maybe take their foot off and press it again. I, I, I want to see if the words cycle to only be these, these, okay. these. You step off, you step off and back on, and then it's a stone dollar castle bar. Okay, so they're cycling. Common thread ties it all together. What's the common thread between all of these things that we're seeing? All these words? Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, we got the water one. Yes. Mm hmm. Rest, flag, staff, staff, bar. bar. Well, a, a flag, a staff, and a bar can all have, like, a pole or something involved mm -hmm. in it, right? But I don't know about rest. Unless it's a musical rest. That kind of has it, no. Okay. And then stone, dollar, castle. A lot of stone, dollar, I my roll brain intelligence hurts. to see if I notice any patterns. 
<laughs> you, you realize that they're they're cycling. Um, go ahead and roll roll intelligence for me. Wait, rest. Wait, rest is a musical thing. Flag is something on music. A staff is something in music, and so is a bar. Those are all musical terms. Okay, you're right. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I did not know that. Music. And, yeah, this is still news. And then. Stone Dollar Castle Bar. Okay, so we have the common thread of music, and then we have the common thread yeah. of water. So what's the middle one? Stone Dollar Stone Castle Dollar. Bar. Sand. Sand Dollar, Sand Castle, Sand Bar. Yeah, yeah. Sandstone. Okay, uh, so maybe we... Just say them all, I guess, together while sitting on the things. So we say music together, sand, and water. water. And water. Okay. All right. This is weird. All right. But sure. <laughs> so I stand on the plate and I wait yeah. for someone to kind of start. Okay. <laughs> to say it. Should we count to three or something? Well, you're the bard. Yeah. Okay, I'll count yeah. to three and then we'll say music, stand, water. All right? Yeah. One, okay. two, okay. three. Music, music stand, 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 and water. 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 That was the pebbles yeah. on the plateau begin to rattle. You realize the ground is starting to shake. The shaking grows stronger and stronger until you're violently knocked to the ground. Suddenly, the plate plateau fissures, dividing it in two. The crack continues to widen, creating a deep crevasse. Large pieces of the plateau the size of buildings break off and fall into the abyss. And just when you've become positive, you're going to die here. The shaking subsides. You rise to your feet and peer into the crevasse. A sea of lava undulates at the bottom, and along the right wall of the crevasse, you see a huge gray castle carved into the stone. A carved stairway leads up the face to the plateau where you stand. It needed a password? Whoa. Doesn't everything. Ugh. That's this so is weird. Is, is it though? I've I don't know. I don't know this fantasy stuff. Signs into the woods. That's the fantasy I yeah. can get down with. Oof. Okay. Well. So it's, all right. Well. Got these what stairs. do we do now? Let's let's get down there. Let's get down and get your power object. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna I go first? Start heading down. I, I start heading down the stairs. Yeah, I'm going right behind. All right. Yeah, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You head, you start heading down the stairs, which are carved just right into the edge. So if you fall off the side, it's a complete drop into the lava. So you shuffle nice. your way down. Nice. So this is like uh, a real game of the floor is lava. Exactly. <laughs> you, uh, you finally make it to the landing where the large cavernous door of the castle is. It's completely carved into the side of the, the rock face. There are uh, two stone doors, but they are slightly pushed open, leaving kind of a squeeze space to squeeze into the castle. Can we like peek in to see what's ahead? Uh, yeah, you can roll perception. All right, I'm gonna roll perception. I'm gonna try to do a little sneaky peek. That mm -hmm. is... Uh, 12 and four. Oh, math, 16. <laughs> All right, you, as you approach the, the, the doors and start to peer in, you hear <laughs> the doors lurch and begin to, to slowly scrape open. And as the, Oops. as they open, you stare into the darkness of the castle. Stale air flows out to where you stand. And then suddenly, 
braziers on the side of on each pillar <laughs> turn on and a green and purple flame emanates alighting the entrance chamber there's no one in there you don't see anybody <laughs> uh, well looks like prism and I will have to investigate this All right. Just keep walking down uh, further into the castle. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Heather and Artemia, do you follow or do you wait at the front? I, I follow I hesitantly. Wanna, I follow because this is pretty cool. Okay. You make your way into the castle and it is, it is completely made of stone. Um, everything is just carved out from the rock itself. Uh, Percy, uh, Wolf Percy, and Prism Tempestborn, could you please each make perception checks for me? All right. Got all the bad rules out. <laughs> um, I got 13. a 13. Uh, 15, okay. sorry. As you continue into the castle, you come to... Uh, an archway. You can't see in it because it's at a 90 degree angle. Um, but as you're approaching, you both hear reverberate through from that hall just this <laughs> noise. As much as I don't Wait want to, I'm curious to see what's in there. All right. Do you peek your head around? Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. You peek your head around, and you actually see that the archway itself is is completely barred off. Um, so you can't actually access it, but you peer back into the darkness. And you can make out a slight human figure in the back. As you approach the bar, suddenly <laughs> it charges and it grabs onto the, the iron bars and starts screaming. And it's this rotten, bluish, undead ghoul with sharp yellow pointy teeth. And he is frenzied by seeing you there. But he can't break through the bars and you just stand as he gnashes at you. Can I use my, uh, oh, never mind. This is no. I thought I could make a little light, but I, I would have to. Uh, mm-hmm. I already have a candle back there. Another breath of air flows from further down the hall through a grand archway. What? <laughs> Braziers in the archway, the light. I can. Can you I go said look? The- at that archway? The it's a different archway. It's further on. down. This is just, yeah, it's down. There's a I grand think. archway at the end of this room. I go, I'm going to go it's check out what that is. <laughs> I like walk yeah, away this... from the creepy thing. Yeah, I think we should all go check that out. And you said it's green and purple flames? Yeah. Um, can I roll to see if uh, Prism would know what that means? You um, Like why it's green? You don't. You don't need to roll. You would just know that it is a flame of a magical origin. Um, okay. Okay. And maybe green. Green. Not. Not the. Uh, not the most noble origin. Mm, right. Mm-hmm. There's some. Uh, some dark magic here. Just uh, keep your eyes open. You continue down to that grand archway, and you walk through. And as you enter that room, the braziers zoom, 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 light up again, revealing a huge grand hall with rows of pillars kind of on each side. And there at the end of the hall in the center, carved of stone, is a throne, a giant towering throne. And then about halfway between you and the throne, s- sitting blade down in a pedestal, is a golden bejeweled sword with a little beam that- of light shining on it. Oh. 
Do you think that's the power object? Looks like it. Guarantee you it's not gonna be easy to take that off the throne. Yeah. It feels like this is uh, someone else's stuff. <laughs> There's like a throne and... Well, I mean, we need well, to, to take it. Right. I just wonder if there's, like, someone around where we can be like, hey, we need to borrow it to get home, but we'll return it when we're done. You know, like... That's really cute. Be... Um, it's not Chill with that. <laughs> Wolf, you're strong. Yes, I am. And so I right. march forward into... Right. Into uh, whatever this is. So you head to the center of the room, um, and you're standing now right in front of this golden sword. Well, that's pretty. <sighs> looks good. What it makes us powerful. think that if we try to pull this sword this. out, that things are going to come and attack us the moment we touch the thing? Magic. It's definitely protected by magic. I, I feel like we can almost guarantee that's the case. Well, maybe, mm. just maybe, I... Prism, the magic that protects this sword might be broken by a kid who's pure-hearted, of sound mind, strong spirit and courage. A kid who was destined to come here and save everyone from damnation. A kid who's ready to put it all on the line. And I grab the, uh, the, the end of the sword and pull as hard as I can. All right. As you reach down with your hand and you grasp the sword, your hand goes right through it and the sword suddenly vanishes. Ah, ha, 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 you blundering buffoon. You fell for the oldest trick in the book. Suddenly, a skeleton wearing a purple cloak apparates, sitting on the throne. From behind, two ghouls appeared, the same that you saw in that little prison, and they flank him. You come seeking the power object, no doubt, but all you will find is death. Ha 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 ha! I am Jeffrey Sword Stealer, the All Powerful. Prepare to die! The ghouls are charge at you. Roll initiative. Oh, this is totally not rad. Okay, oh, no. mine is uh, 11. All right. Rolled a 17. Eight. You had eight? Me, Prism. All right, what do you have, Arthemia? Seven. Okay. So the first ghoul <laughs> charges out and he runs up to Wolf. And he is going to, with his, he's got big long claws off of his finger and he comes and he tries to grab into your flesh with his claws. Ooh, Ooh that's a 22. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Um, can you make a constitution saving throw for me? Yes, I can. Oh, that's a nat 20. All right. So, uh, you, there's no effect other than pain. <laughs> Five damage um, as it kind of rips its claws across your chest and kind of shreds up your the front of your, your armor plate. All right. The next ghoul runs up to Prism and is going to try to do the same thing. Prism, what's your AC? 15. 15. All right, you're prepared for it, and as the ghoul comes to swipe by, you parry away their arms with your the back of your axe. Uh, Wolf, you're up. All right. I, I, uh, I look at the, uh, the ghoul that, that scratched me, and I just... I don't want to have to do this, and I swing the blade at them. All right, go ahead and roll to hit. That is an 18. All right, uh, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. That's going to be an 11. 
11 damage. Nice, dude. Ooh. So you, uh, as, as this ghoul rips into your, your armor and slashes across to your chest, you take your sword and whip it, and you actually cut a hole, like, um, halfway through his body. And you realize as you cut through him, he doesn't bleed. But his body is now kind of in shambles as he continues his frenzied attack. Oh. Up next, Heather. Um, okay, so first, is there anywhere to, like, take cover? There are pillars all around. That you all can right, go Heather's through. gonna first take some cover. And then Heather's going to uh, use again her her beautiful song. Uh, this time it's going to be Sweetie Todd, and she will be singing Sweetie Todd. And, uh, that's not the that's not actually how Sweetie Todd goes, but you get it. And uh, cast dissonant whispers on the one that was coming for Iffy. Okay, uh, you do that, and the the ghoul seems completely unaffected by your charming magic. You just... Okay. In a complete rage for As flesh. a bonus... Do I have a bonus action? Uh, yeah, you do get a bonus action each turn. From behind the pillar, I go, you got this, Iffy! Or wait, I go, you got this, wolf! <laughs> and Iffy? and I give him that? some Who's bardic inspiration. Oh! Ooh, all right. Uh, do you want to explain what that is, Kelsey? Yes. Yeah, so Barnus Inspiration, what I just gave you, Wolf, uh, means that uh, a creature other than myself within 60 feet can hear me and gains an inspiration die. For 10 minutes, uh, you, Wolf, can add it to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. And this can be added after seeing the roll, but not knowing the outcome. Oh. So if you want to pad your roll, you get to roll. Okay. Uh, yeah. An inspiration die. I've inspired uh, you. Which I forget what uh, what die is that, by the way. What number? It says one d one d six. One d six. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Good move. Prism, you're up. There's there's a ghoul right. uh, currently in melee range of you. I would love to take both of my axes, uh, hand axes, and try to try to get them. Okay. All right, that's a, oh wait, what is that? I think it's plus five, whoops. Yeah, 14. A 14 hits. Um, and then go ahead and roll for your uh, second attack as well, because you're dual wielding. All right. Uh, 16. 16, that also don't hits, so you with both. Roll, roll damage for both. All right. Damage is D6 plus three. Do that twice. Yep. One plus four, three. Wait, math. Five <laughs> plus six, 11 total. 11, 11 total damage. Way to go. Woo. You, do you, you take your act and you just cleave from the side and you, you dig your blade into each of its shoulders and just take big gashes out of each side. So its arms are now just kind of flailing from what little flesh remains. <laughs> Still coming for you, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, at this point, the the skeleton on the, on the throne rises, and he says, You witless fools! Do I have to do everything for you? And he then casts, he starts to conjure something with his hands, and suddenly, boom, three magical darts fly out from his hand. One toward Wolf, one toward uh, Prism, and one toward uh, Artemia. And uh, the thing about Magic Missile is it automatically hits. Oh no. Um, <laughs> oh no. Uh, so you each Glad are going to take... Uh, <laughs> you each take two damage as the missiles kind of bounce off your armor and uh, just leave a little bit of like a burnt singe, but otherwise ah. do very little. Uncomfortable. <laughs> Artemia, you are up. 
Where am I standing currently? How close are they to me? Um, you are kind of toward the back of the group. Um, both ghouls are, you can easily run up to. Um, you are just a little bit too far away to get to the, the skeleton. Okay, I want to try to injure, severely injure one of the ghouls with my long sword. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll to hit. Are you going to injure the, try to hit the one near uh, wolf or the one near prism? The one near prism. Okay. I rolled a 17. All right, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Three. I believe you also have inspiration, so remember that. Three damage. All right. You're still getting used to the weight of your sword, and you kind of lug it around, um, but you don't get much force behind it. So you actually manage to land it in the side of the ghoul, but it doesn't cut very deep, and it seem just seems to enrage him even further, and he lets out a yelp and stares at you. Uh, and we go back to the top of the order. Ify, that ghoul that is on you. Uh, is going to try to grab you and sink his teeth into your shoulder. Uh, that is a 21, which I believe hits. Yes. Oh, to <laughs> snake eyes. Uh, three damage. As you kind of keep, as you're fighting, the keep trying neck. to push him off. He, his teeth barely sink in just a little bit, but you manage to shove him back off of you and draw your blade again. Prism. The ghoul on you is going to once again try to swing his claws. Uh-oh, that's a crit. That's a net 20. All right, give me give me a minute here. We got to roll some uh, roll some dice. Oh boy. Um, while, while I'm doing that, can you make a constitution saving throw for me? Sure can. I can't give Bardic inspiration like during this moment, right? Or I can't, no, okay. Uh, no, not at the moment. Dang it. Well, I got a 19 on the con save. Okay. So the, the ghoul sinks its claws into your shoulders for 12 damage. Oh. Um, but you are, uh, you can feel like this almost venom kind of push into your body but you manage to withstand and kind of shake off the feeling and push the ghoul off of you before it can paralyze you. <sighs> Wolf, All right. you're up. All right. You nibble on my neck, I'm gonna have to make you pay for it. And I just jut my uh, blade forward into uh, cool. this Roll the hit. monster. That is 10, roll the 10. 10. A 10 does not hit. The ghoul actually, you, in your struggle, you whiff completely just right to the side of its body. And Heather, both of these ghouls are still frenziedly clawing at your friends. What do you do? Uh. I don't see the like power object around, right? I can't like sneak no, it, the, away. No, the sword you saw like... vanished. No, you, you can you can okay. use your action to look around if you want. Is it worth using my action to look around? That's up to you. Yeah, it's up to me. Mm, okay, I'll. She'll. She'll. She's. Her friends are in trouble, and she's a real. A real one. You know. She's ride or die. Even though she's scared. So she's gonna pull out her little. Um, <laughs> her little weapon, and she's gonna shoot it towards uh, one of the ones attacking. Uh, probably Prism. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and roll the hit. Okay. Ooh, that's a 19. That hits, roll damage. Yeah, all right. Ro damage is the other die, right? Yeah. That's a one. And then there's a, sorry, I'm getting back into. Uh, oh, so it's one, 
We do the D8. Oh, it's plus four. So, wait, five? Is that right? One D8 plus two? Sorry, I'm getting confused yeah, with the roll, math here. So yeah, you would roll You would roll the die it tells you and then add the plus it's that it's after it. Okay. Plus two, so three. Three damage, okay. Three damage. With and you did that with but then, okay. Oh yeah, what? Yeah, go for it. I do that with a crossbow. Okay. But then after that, she, see, she sees that um, Prism is, got, just got hurt quite a bit. And so she's going to say a healing word. And today's healing word is, uh. is you're beautiful. And, <laughs> and with that, <laughs> she's using a healing word to Prism, which means that uh, the creature of my choice within range regains hit points equal to 1d4 plus your spell casting ability modifier. I don't know what my sp Oh, it looks like it's plus it three. Like plus three. Thank you. I got seven back. Yay! Um, Prism, hears this. Prism hears this and says, no one ever tells me that. Thank you. <laughs> Starts to cry a little bit. Oh. Okay, is that your turn, Kelsey? Yeah, that's my turn. That's all I got. Perfect. Prism, with your newfound strength, what are you going to do? All right. Um, I'm going to try to take out this ghoul who uh, just snapped me. All right. Me, he's me. in. After, after that arrow hit him in the side, he is in very bad shape. Good. Uh, yeah, I want to take him out. I probably just, yeah, same thing. Double axes. Um, let's see what happens. All right, 15 and 7. Um, the, the 15 hits. All right. So go ahead and roll damage for one of those. That is a uh, 2. All right, you bury your axe into oh, the ghoul. Sorry, it's four. Four. Four? Okay, perfect. You actually, well, in that case, how would you like to <laughs> to uh, <gasps> in incapacitate this beast? Hey! Um, well, I have some tears of happiness in my eyes because no one ever calls me beautiful and someone just called me beautiful and I feel healed. So uh, I was distracted and one of my axes missed, but the other one just goes straight into the top of his skull. Actually, he lets out one final <gasps> and then crumples to the ground. And that from, from the throne, you hear the skeleton. He goes, ah, you boob. And then, and then he, uh, and then he then runs down to you, Prism. And he, he grabs onto you and his hands, his skeletal hands alight in like electricity. And he tries to grasp onto you. Ooh. Okay, so does a nine hit? No. Nine doesn't hit. So you manage to fight him off, kind of sidestep him, push him past as he's charging at you and uh, draw your, your axe and prepare to fight. Artemia, you're up. There's one ghoul left, and then the, the Skeleton King. Can I take advantage of the fact that I am very petite and jump atop of him and try to scratch his eyes out? Uh, yes, you can. It, it's not as uh, damaging as a sword, but I, I, I like it, so do it. And I'll I just kind of suck at the sword right now. I can't really... True. I can trust... I, I watched a lot of telenovelas growing up with my abuela, so... <laughs> I feel like this is might be a stronger attack for me. Go Let's for see. It. Okay. <sighs> you have inspiration. Anyway. Yes, you're, I'm you're glad I have on, inspiration. I'm you're sorry. You're jumping on the ghoul, right? I am jumping on the ghoul and trying to take cool. his eyeballs out. I would pull his hair, but he has none. Um, okay, so I'm gonna use my inspiration because I rolled a crummy nine. Okay. 21. <gasps> yes! All right, you hop up, you kind of reach up into the goal and you grab around and you <laughs> just start clawing and pushing and you hear him let out a screech and you hear, well, pops as his eyes are ripped out 
in your rage. Can you roll uh roll a D eight for me? <laughs> that is a seven. Seven? Alright. The ghoul, uh, as you, you rip out his eyes and the ghoul falls down dead to the ground. The skeleton goes, dolts, halfwits, bunglers, brainless idiots, you couldn't even beat a motley group of gnomes. And then, Wolf, you're up. All right, so who's still left on the field? Is it the, just the skeleton Just the skeleton, man? yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I go, you messed with the wrong group of adventurers today. And I run towards the skeleton man and and wave my sword at him. All right, roll the roll the hit. That is a net twenty. Oh! Yeah. All right, net roll that 20. critical damage for me. All right. Try and get that. What's the critical damage? Is do you roll two? Uh, you roll. So you roll whatever the die is twice, and then add the plus. So you do double okay. two rolls, and then add the plus oh, afterwards. Yeah. It automatically did that. Nice. Uh, that's a twelve. Twelve damage with your sword. All right. You you take your sword and you rip it through his body. It actually shatters. His, his right arm as you just crush through it and rip through his purple cloak, revealing his bony skeleton beneath. He is in very bad shape. Oh, you bone lord. Can I uh, up next, we have Heather. Uh, he can hear, right? Can I yeah. try dissonant whispers again? You can. Okay, I'm gonna try dissonant whispers again. And she's on a Sweeney Todd kick, but she's going to be like singing Joanna. I hear you, Joanna, uh, at him. Okay. Not my faves. <laughs> um, I believe, what's the what's the save on that? It's a, I believe it's a wisdom save. Okay. Of? 13. Oh, he rolled a one. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He... You can see he, uh... Sondheimed! Suddenly his, his head snaps over in your direction and he goes, Hey! What's going on? And he goes in pain. Go ahead and roll your damage. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. I will roll. Okay. That's a four. And then I believe it's... What is it again? Three D6. So four. Four. Eight. And ten. Nice. <laughs> All right. So what is that? Four. So twenty-two damage. No, 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 no. Four. No, four no. plus four, eight plus oh. two was ten. Yeah. Ten damage. Okay, I was like, that's not ten right, damage. Kelsey. No, that Are doesn't matter. The math. The, the the skeleton king Jeffrey Sword Stealer drops down to one knee in agony as you continue to sing. Uh, he seems Agony to have almost also a Sondheim song, so <laughs> I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Prism, Prism, he's now on the ground in, in agony. What what do you do? Um. Uh. uh well, uh, I'm actually going to try to intimidate him into telling us where the power object is. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and roll him. Well, what do you, what do you do? First, what do you say or what do you do to intimidate him? So yeah, I walk over to him. I take my double axes and I kind of put them at his neck and I say, mm -hmm. listen, skeleton man, we just came here for one thing and it wasn't to end your undead life. Just tell us where it is and we'll be on our way. Ha 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 ha, you fool. You'll never take the power object. I am Jeffrey Sword Stealer, and I shall vanquish you to the depths of the underworld. He doesn't <laughs> seem to be uh, 
capable of being intimidated. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I'm just going to... Uh, and uh, uh, he's actually... That would have been... Are you okay? Uh, do you have any bonus action or anything you want to do? Or is that your... Um, I... Uh, yeah, I would... I, I guess I'll just take a strike at him. Okay, roll roll to hit. Oh, actually, he's down on any, so just roll damage because he's right there on the ground in front of you. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to do unarmed strike, so that's just four okay. damage. Cool. Um, so uh, you you take your fist and you just uppercut him and his skull detaches from his body. And with his magic no longer holding his bones together, Jeffrey's bones, they, they fall apart into a pile beneath his purple cloak. And the battle ends. And behind you, you hear the sound of grinding stone. You turn around and see the floor where the illusory sword once stood is now rotating down deeper into the earth. A dim light grows, a dim light glows from within the hole and then suddenly flashes in a blinding light. And there, before your eyes, floats a sword of shining silver. Nothing like the gaudy blade that you saw when first entering. It floats in the air and begins to slowly turn and drift over toward Wolf, handle first. Wolf, you can see that the cross guard was cast to resemble two wolves leaping out in opposite directions, and fine etchings of wolves attacking decorate the blade itself. As you grab it, <laughs> It feels perfectly balanced in your hand. And much like the potion you drank yesterday, you feel immense energy begin to flow through you. In fact, Artemi and Heather, when Wolf grabs the sword, you have the same feeling. Oh my. Uh. <laughs> I feel good. Yeah. I feel like the night man. Do you think he stole that sword? Or like yeah. that his just name was like uncomfortably sword stealer and it just like happened to be a coincidence. Mm. Oh, like he fulfilled Probably his own destiny sword stealer. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, just a thought. Anyway, back to back to you, Wolf. How about that sword? Yeah. <laughs> it's a I nice guess, sword. Uh, this is the perfect power object for me. I think we're going to make it out of here. Indeed we Looks are. Good on you. you turn and you walk back out of the castle. And as you leave, the, the braziers boom, 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 extinguish. And you step out into the light and the stone doors close. You ascend the stairs and arise back at the top of the plateau, overlooking the vast landscape below, the vast forest as the sun sets in a fiery orange. You begin your trek back down the switchback to Emma's cobblestone home. And that concludes our session. That is awesome. Mm. Great job, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats on oh. episode two. Yeah. I'm keeping these eyeballs. I'm keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> you like sew them into a necklace and you're like. <laughs> they will come in handy at some point on this adventure. Oh. Well, thank you so much, Elisa, for joining us on the campaign today. Uh, I hope you had fun with the Dungeon Club. Oh, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. And if our audience wants to follow you, where should they go? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Aliza Pearl. Uh, I also stream here on Twitch at Apiza Liza. So that's A-P-I-Z-A-L-I-Z-A. -A -I -I. And we'll be rating you after the stream. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hop on in like eight. Well, I'm going to hop on right now and do some Klingon makeup if you want to see me put on makeup and look <laughs> like a Klingon. That sounds like the perfect thing to do right after this. <laughs> well, thank you so much for 
coming. Uh, thank you, audience, for watching. Uh, reminder that we stream these episodes every week on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But if you want to follow and put on that notification bell, you will not have to remember any of that or convert what time zone you're in. Uh, if you miss an episode, they will always be uploaded onto our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash BuzzFeed Multiplayer on Fridays. Uh, also, make sure to follow on Twitter to get some... Uh, you know, in between time information, best clips, etc. And make sure to use the hashtag the Dungeon Club for all fan art tweets, etc. And until then, we will see you in the next episode. Uh, thanks for joining the Dungeon Club. We'll see you next time. Play the theme. Play the theme song. <laughs> Kids in high school get in a food fight. The principal sends them to detention. It's just a normal day in the 80s. There's something I didn't mention. You see that old janitor starts acting weird and it throws them all in a closet. They fall through a portal and to their surprise, there's a world in which they deposit. Oh yeah, alright. No doves, no dice. And savage If you wanna defeat them You'll find out what's your damage Choose your weapon Cast a spell Roll the dice and rule But at the end of the day Gotta get back to school Oh yeah Alright No dice Super duper dungeon club that's right.